Okay, so now I should be able to, you should be able to hear me, right? All right, let me uh, undo the, um, or unmute the mics real quick. So the mics will be on just so you know, just, just for a minute. Hello. There it is. Okay.
Good evening, everyone. I will call to order the City of Laguna Beach Planning Commission meeting for March 6th, 2024. Uh, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Goldman? Here. Commissioner Whiten? Present. Commissioner Dubin? Yes. Chair Pro Tim Kellenberg? Here. And Chair Sadler? Here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, before we get into our uh, public hearings, uh, there's a period here for uh, public communication at the beginning of our meeting. Uh, this is a period where members of the public can come up and address the Planning Commission on um, items that are not on tonight's agenda, but are items under the Planning Commission's purview. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who would like to make public communication here tonight? Seeing no one, um, or, and we don't, <laughs> I'm so trained to think of people online. Uh, there is nobody online, apparently. So um, we will uh, close public communications and move on to our consent calendar. Uh, the consent calendar uh, consists of uh, item 4.1, which is the February 21st, 2024 draft minutes. Would anybody, any commissioners like to uh, pull that item? Any members of the public have any issues or would like to pull that item regarding our previous minutes? Seeing no one, would somebody like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar? I move that we approve the consent calendar. In second. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Goldman? Yes. Commissioner Whiten? Yes. Commissioner Dubin? Yes. Chair Pro Tim Kellenberg? Yes. And Chair Sadler? Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. We'll move on to our public hearings. Our public hearings uh, typically uh, will be uh, run in, in the following fashion. Um, staff will present uh, the application and present their um, staff report. Um, after they've done that, uh, the commission has the ability to ask staff any questions. Um, after that, uh, the applicant team will uh, typically have um, five minutes to present their application. Uh, after they're finished with that, uh, there may be some questions from the commissioners to the applicant team. Um, then we will open up uh, for members of the public to speak. Uh, we ask that you uh, come up here. You'll speak at the podium. Um, after you're done speaking, there's a uh, chart or list on the table over there if you could please print your name just so we can get the spelling of your name correct for the minutes um, while you're up there speaking you will have three minutes uh, there's a series of lights up there on the podium uh, when the yellow light flashes and there'll be some beep uh, that means you have 30 seconds left and when the red light flashes and an, uh, another tone sounds that means your uh, time is up and we ask that you uh, wrap it up um, so our first uh, public hearing tonight is item 5.1. And before uh, we get into that, I first will ask uh, if there are any commissioner disclosures on this item. I met with the applicant's uh, architect and one of the principals. Uh, as did I, and I also met, um, uh, spoke to two members of the Heritage Committee. Okay, and I, I spoke uh, with the applicant team. As did I. I met with the applicant team as well. Okay. And Chair, yes. if I may, I just want to add that during those discussions, nothing that is not in the staff report or potentially in the oral report tonight was gleaned by the planning commission or planning commissioners. And if so, please note that, that information prior to opening public comment. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll also uh, note that... Um, I received an email from a uh, staff uh, stating that the applicant team felt that they needed additional time uh, above and beyond the typical five minutes for their initial uh, presentation. Uh, they have a, a PowerPoint presentation. It is a pretty, as we know, a, a long running and pretty complex project. Um, so they originally were asking for 15 minutes for their presentation. Typically, you know, as I said, it's five minutes, so that seemed to be maybe a little bit much, but I will open that up to 
a discussion amongst uh, my fellow commissioners here to uh, see how they feel about that, if they're okay with uh, 15 minutes, if they think it should be 10 minutes, or if they think they should be um, held to the typical five minutes. Well, I think since the last time we actually reviewed this, it's been over a year ago, um, and things have evolved and changed, I'm sure I'd, I would like to uh, allow the applicant team as much time as they need to give us a full comprehensive overview of what they're planning on doing. Okay, Commissioner Wayne. 15 minutes is fine. Okay. I agree. Okay. Um, so fine. Uh, you guys will have uh, 15 minutes for your initial application. Uh, in light of that, I will, um, you know, consider uh, giving members of the public who wish to speak on this uh, some additional time to speak as, as well. Um, so uh, with that, if uh, we could please have our staff report, Martina. Good evening, Commission. Thank you, Ch um, Chair Sadler, I'm Martina Caron, Principal Planner and the Project Planner for this project. Um, the request tonight is for Design Review 222304 for the Hotel Laguna at 425 South Coast Highway. Um, as I just mentioned, the project is located at 425 South Coast Highway, and it is located along South Coast Highway, just south of Laguna Avenue. The property is located in the downtown specific plan area and within the Central Bluff District of the downtown. City records indicate that the property is developed with a 68 room hotel with restaurants, conference facilities, commercial retail spaces, and on site valet parking. In a historic memorandum prepared by Chattel Incorporated in 2020, a detailed history was provided for the property. The memorandum details that the hotel was constructed in 1930 for the Laguna Beach Hotel Company. The building was designed in the Mission Revival style by master architect Gilby, Gilbert Stanley Underwood. At the beginning of construction, the estimated cost would be $152,000. It was the largest building permit that was taken out at the city to date. And the Laguna Beach, the Hotel Laguna opened on August 11th, 1930, and the final cost of construction ended up being $450,000. Beginning in January of 1943, the Marine Corps leased the rooms of the building um, as bachelor's office quarters um, to relieve overcrowding at the El Toro um, Marine Base during World War II. During the 40s and 50s, a number of celebrities also stayed at the building, many of whom were passing back through um, on their way back to Los Angeles after visiting the Del Mar racetrack. This included um, celebrities like Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, uh, Rosalind Russell, Errol Flynn, Joan Fontaine, and Charles Lindbergh. The banquet room and dining room two-story addition was constructed in 1950, and also during the 50s, there were several different alterations, which also included new storage um, building in 1952 and a lobby remodel in 1955. In March of 1985, Clayson and Georgia Anderson leased the property and ran the business until the end of 2017. In 2019, a part one significance historic preservation certificate application for the subject property, which was also prepared by Chattel, was provided to the National Park Service, which it was, and it was certified. This official determination of eligibility for the list, the property for the listing on the National Historic Register um, provides for an automatic listing in the California Register of Historic Resources. And as such, the property is a historic resources um, and meets the definition of a historic resource under the California Environmental Quality Act. On December 1st, 2021, the Planning Commission provided feedback and reviewed a concept review for the property. Um, the review outlined the historic restoration plan for Hotel Laguna, which included a work plan, a timeline, exterior material samples, concepts for the restoration of the Marine Room, or now called the Coral Room, and the potential restoration of a roof sign. The Planning Commission suggested that the applicant provide historical research and documentation when the formal project application was brought forward and back for their review. On January 4th, 2023, the applicant returned to the Planning Commission with a formal design review application, um, which included the replacement of guest room windows with aluminum casement windows, the replacement of fire escape doors and access ways on the second and third floors, and the repainting of the exterior of the building. During the hearing, the Planning Commission expressed concerns that the project was not um, provided with a comprehensive plan and specifically that it didn't address replacement of the awnings on the building. The Commission was also concerned that the proposed window design and color did not appear consistent with the period of significance. 
After holding the hearing, the commission recommended a comprehensive plan be submitted and that the applicant remove uh, consider removing the rock veneer planters along the street level and restoring additional architectural features that were indicated on historic postcards and photographs that appear to have been lost over time. The commission also suggested that the applicant revise the project to include windows that would be more similar to the 1930s design and consider double hung windows. The planning commission voted unanimously to continue the project to a date uncertain and allow the applicant to the revise the project to consider the 1930s period of significance. Since the previous hearing, the application has been updated. Um, there is a new architectural team on board that has been working on the project. Um, the project this evening includes a request for design review for the replacement of guest room windows, the replacement of the fire escapes and access ways, repainting of the building, and um, a new component that was not previously proposed includes facade restoration, which um, identifies restoring the street level cafe arched windows, um, also installing new awnings and removing that rock veneer along the streetscape. I'll go into a little bit more detail of each of these components on the next few slides. Um, the window replacements are part one of this application and the applicant proposes to remove the existing steel and aluminum casement guest room windows, which are not original and replace them with Marvin essential bronze colored fiberglass double hung windows. All the guest room windows will be replaced with a similar design in an effort to restore a consistent appearance throughout the building, um, which was historically provided when the um, building was initially constructed. The design of these windows allows for a more historically accurate window, window profile and will provide a harmonious appearance. The windows are proposed to be replaced within the existing framing openings and no restuccoing is anticipated. The applicant has noted that because most of the windows have damaged sills or trims, that these sills will be replaced in kind when necessary to match the existing after the windows are installed. The pro project also includes replacing the existing wood hung windows and the fire escapes with egress doors at the north, south, and west elevation of the structures. The fire escape windows are proposed to be replaced to accommodate life safety considerations and will include the installation of French doors that are more operable um, in the case of an emergency. And they will be replaced with a similar appearance to the proposed double hung windows that are proposed throughout the building. The new doors will swing outward, and, but will fit within the existing window openings. However, the existing stills will be lowered um, several inches to accommodate the doors. Additionally, um, the, fire, the deteriorated fire escape balconies and ladders will be replaced with similar but conforming systems. The proposed fire escapes will appear similar in design except for some of the existing construction like the great spacing, the railing heights um, will be updated to comply with current building codes. It's anticipated that the overall landing decks uh, will have to be project slightly out larger between six to 12 inches to accommodate the swing of the new fire escape doors. The applicant proposes to change the exterior colors of the building um, and the exterior walls will be pro are proposed as a classic light buff and the existing terracotta trim will be changed to a Morris gray color. Um, this is consistent with the color changes presented at the prior January 4th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting colors. Since the last review by the commission, the applicant has expanded the proposed scope of work and the project now includes restoring the archways on the north corner of the building and other restorations to the primary facade, which is identified as the coast highway elevation. After the planning commission meeting in January, the applicant team discovered that the previous archways on that corner cafe have been framed in as part of an earlier renovation, um, but they can be restored with minimal structural modifications. The applicant has also revised the project and request to install awnings in the original locations on the east and north elevations based on historic documentation. The four retail storefronts, um, the south side and east elevation, and all the arch, arch storefronts on the east and north elevation would have striped awnings in the classic light buff and rustic red colors. The main entrance to the hotel is proposed to have a new awning with the rustic red color. Modern light fixtures at the entry door will also be replaced with more period appropriate sconces and the existing rock veneer will be removed to expose the stucco planters on that northeast corner of the building. 
as part of the project review, um, because the project is identified as a historic resource, um, staff has to reviewed uh, any potential impacts to the historic structure. And generally, um, the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines state that if a project complies with the Secretary of the Interior standards, it's presumed to have a less than significant impact on the historic resource. Um, multiple historic assessments have been prepared for the project as identified on this slide and in the staff report. Um, the submittal and package identifies here four from the applicant team, which were all peer reviewed by GPA, um, and all of which conclude that the property um, will remain a historic resource and that the proposed project will not create a significant impact to the proposed or the existing historic resource. Um, one comment I do want to make, though, is in the GPA peer review, it was identified that because all of the sills would be replaced, um, we have included a condition that they each be assessed um, and photo documented so that if the sill is repairable, it will be repaired, but if it is deteriorated, it will be replaced. That's condition 20 in the uh, resolution. On February 26th of 2024, the Heritage Committee reviewed the this design review application and a summary of that review is provided in the staff report. Um, minutes for that meeting have not yet been approved, so they're not ready for publication. Um, after holding the public hearing, the committee unanimously voted, which was a 4-0 vote, that the Planning Commission approved the project with five conditions noted on this slide. As identified in the staff report, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the recommended categorical exemption under the section 5 or 15301 and 15331, which allows for modifications to existing facilities when there are negligible or no expansion of the existing use and allows for repair and maintenance and minor alteration of structures. Additionally, the class 31 exemption provides for modifications to a historic resource that are consistent with the his Secretary of the Interior standards. Um, further, no exemptions outlined in the CEQA guidelines in section 15300.2 apply. The city posted an exemption on the city's website for this work because this project is exempt from a coastal development permit pursuant to the municipal code. Um, the appeal period for that exemption expired on January 8th, 2024, and no appeal was su submitted. The project did not require the approval of a coastal development permit and is exempt because the proposed action is considered repair and maintenance activities do, that do not result in the addition to or enlargement or expansion of an object and that no improvements are proposed within 50 feet of the sand. Um, by motion, it is recommended, or it is recommended that the Planning Commission by motion adopt the resolution approving design review project and find that the action is exempt from CEQA. So um, this concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions. We've received several letters, as I know have been distributed to the Planning Commission um, up until this hearing. Um, and I've also included the recommendations that were made by the Heritage Committee here on this slide for your review. And this concludes my presentation. Great. Thank you, Martina. Are there Chair, if I may, yeah, sure. uh, in addition to Ms. Carone's great presentation here, uh, we've also provided a supplemental report for your consideration, your review this afternoon. And that includes a GPA consultant memo that we received this afternoon. Great. Yes, I saw that. All right. Thank you. Um, are there any uh, commissioner questions of staff at this point? I have a few. Sure. Uh, does staff consider uh, what is going to be presented tonight as a full comprehensive plan for the uh, exterior um, renovation? Um, what's presented this evening is the only application that we have for any exterior modifications to the building. Um, we do, the applicant team has indicated that in the future they are planning to submit a sign application, but it is not something that has been submitted yet for the city to consider. Okay. Um, I know there were some recent, uh, I, I guess some work was being done that, uh, was either the permits were not fully pulled yet or whatever. Can you explain, uh, what was going on there? This happened within the last couple of weeks. Um, sure. There were 
two instances where code enforcement was contacted. Um, the city went out and in one instance, there was a plumbing repair. Um, and since the applicant has um, obtained a permit for that repair, um, additionally, there was um, some repair that I believe was going on for um, a stairway. That work has stopped. Um, the applicant team may be able to give you a little bit more detail about um, those instances. Sure. Um, but at this moment, there is not a stop work order on the property and there isn't any pending code enforcement okay. um, for th those recent modifications. Um, also, uh, I, know the, I know the project falls under the Art and Public Places Program or what is now called the Public Art Program. <laughs> Um, and there, uh, as we stated back in, uh, January of 2023, uh, above the, uh, front door, um, and it appears in several, um, uh, images from the original, uh, when the building was constructed, uh, a coat of arms, uh, probably a tile piece or whatever. Would that, um, because this is a renovation, um, and we have we did request over a year ago that that be part of the reno renovation. Would that be considered uh, something that could be fall into the art and public places program, or or would that be a separate issue? I think that if the um, part of the art and public places program does provide the applicant the opportunity to identify the location for the public art. So if that was an area that was identified for the public art, that I think it could be incorporated. Um, in so the you don't area. think that would be just part of the uh, renovation versus? I think it could be either or. So I think there's an opportunity to use that um, as part of the public art, but it also could be just um, part of the restoration as well and rehabilitation. Yeah. Okay. Um... There, there is some landscaping happening, but there was no landscaping plan submitted. Is is that something that staff would require or, or not? I think that um, if the commission would like to see more detail or have the applicant provide that, that we that could definitely be done. Okay. In fact, covers it for now. Thanks, Martina. Commissioner Whiten. Yes. My question has to do with the window material. Okay. Uh, to step right into it. <laughs> and that has... Uh, almost, I'm almost looking through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that has to do with, the, first, the category of um, restoration here. This is a rehabilitation project, um, not a full-on historic restoration. Um, my question has to do with what is the appropriate criteria we should be using vis-a-vis -vis approval of the window material. Okay. Because there seems clearly there are two camps. One is uh, the historic consultant, the historic peer review consultant, the staff, uh, and the applicant. And the other is the Heritage Committee. And um, so those are diametrically opposed. Okay. Well, I think the first thing that is important to discuss is that um, when we're viewing the historic resource and any project proposed to modify a historic resource, we have to be um, cautious to make sure that there isn't a substantial impact to the historic resource. So um, when reviewing the project, we've relied upon the historians to provide guidance in that um, of that um, application of the Secretary of Interior standards. The standards do provide for replacement of windows with alternative materials than the original. Um, it's itemized in the staff report and also itemized um, in the email that was sent to you by GPA this afternoon, where um, the standards do allow for alternative materials that provide the same look, style, feel, and basically replication of the um, historic feature. Um, those modifications to the material can be for windows, for coping, for architectural features, all different types of things. So the important point to note is that um, either or the window, the fiberglass window or the wood window, if it was designed if to match the historic aspects of 
the window um, would be consistent with the standards. So beyond that, there's no specific criteria that the Planning Commission should be using to decide what's the appropriate material. Um, but um, when you're taking into account the entire project, um, it's recommended to look at a balance of the restoration, um, practical applications, practical use of the building, and all of those items. You mentioned the the scale and feel of the windows. Um, how accurately do, do the windows need to replicate the original um, dimensions? I think the goal is always as close as possible, but I'll defer to the historian for a little more guidance on that. Um, regardless of what material is installed, um, is the building, um, can the building uh, with, let me, let me put it this way, with fiberglass windows, can the building still qualify for the Mills Act? It would be subject to Heritage Committee review, but um, yes, if the project complies with the Secretary of Interior standards, typically it would be eligible for the Mills Act. And um, an important point to note is that currently, even with the modified windows or the altered windows that have existed, it was found eligible for the National Register. Um, even as it stands today, it wasn't conditionally approved that the windows be modified. It's actually as it stands today. So um, any improvement or more of a historically accurate window would only help improve its um, status. Thank you. Um, Martina, so what you're saying, when it was approved on the National Register, it did not have wood windows? Is that what you said? I'm sorry. Yeah, it, yeah. it was because what it is today yeah. in the current state is how it was approved for the National okay. Register. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any questions? <clears throat> yeah, uh, just following up on this this line of discussion and sort of the uh, SOIS standards seems to be kind of this threshold that we're focusing on. Isn't that though, and this is a clarification, isn't that kind of a floor? I mean, isn't that really kind of a, a safety net that says you can't go below those standards, otherwise it threatens the historical, you know, uh, standing of the building? Is there anything in those standards that says that the local jurisdiction doesn't have the power to ask for a higher level of historical um, consistency? No, the local jurisdiction can require... Um additional modifications, assuming they don't create an impact. Um, right. And so I think I wouldn't use it as a baseline. I mean, typically when we're working with projects, the standards are kind of a high bar to achieve um, and sometimes um, can be problematic when we're working sometimes with single family homes that have been altered and trying to um, match a applicant's desire and balancing their project versus with um, consistency with the standards. Um, it is a, a bar. I mean, the language I think states uh, exactly, let me pull what I want to say. So the standards um, note for rehabilitation in the 2017 version that although although the same kind of material is always a preferred option, a substitute material may be acceptable alternative. The form, design, and scale, as well as substitute material itself, can effectively replicate the appearance of the remaining features. Yeah, and I understand that 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 it can be that way, yeah. but it, there's nothing there that says that we we couldn't request a higher level of authenticity. No. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Goldman, any other questions? Um, uh, just to follow up a couple things. Uh, um, Commissioner Dubin's kind of comments and questions about the, the recent stop work uh, orders and, and that, that in no way affects um, the the proposed finding that the, this current proposal should be exempt from CEQA? No. Okay. And the other question is that there is a current uh pending appeal with the california coastal commission regarding this property that has not been resolved yet correct correct and the staff is comfortable with this application proceeding while that has still not been fully resolved 
Correct. So the scope of work that's under the, uh, the pending appeal is separate and a, not a part of this application. Um, all the plans have identified that as under separate permit. It's separate and it doesn't um, have any overlapping considerations with this project. Even though it seemed as though part of the basis for that appeal was, um, you know, a uh, basically that they were claiming that, that the project was being piecemealed. And I mean, could, couldn't that same exact argument apply to what we're doing here tonight? And how is that different from what they're currently considering? Yeah. Correct. And so, Chair, if, it, if I may jump in, as Martine, I believe, spoke about earlier, you know, the city and, and staff, we take in applications as we get them. We inquire through the applicant about the, you know, processes and, and hey you know what 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 is your what are your your plans for the for, for the property and the project and so any you know allegation of of kind of piecemealing based off of and once again you're right it's before the coastal commission it's not before us um that that application was processed i, I don't want to say identically but in a very similar fashion to this one staff got it staff reviewed it staff compared it to the uh, and applied the various requirements of the municipal code to it and that is exactly what staff tried to do or no, did do for, for for this one as well so any 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 potential argument of of, of piecemealing is really in the future do does staff know that hey there's a application for a discretionary approval that just got was in the door yesterday but no we're gonna we're gonna you know put our head in the sand and and and, and not look at that that is not the case here and so as of right now staff has had received you, you are right there was an application for separate and distinct work um, which staff process, and that is going through the process. And now this application is for, you know, as, as, as Martina said, an entirely different scope of work. Okay. And I think um, part of the uh, part of that appeal also had something to do with um, the bluff top determination and, and all that. And then we've got this extensive bluff top determination report, which I had to read through multiple times to try to figure out what, you know, what exactly are they saying here? Is is there a bluff or is there not a bluff? And finally, you know, referred to a, a, this one plate, one map that kind of showed, you know, what, where the they show what they think the bluff top is and what the bluff top setback is. What's being presented here tonight, none of it, none of the proposed work is within the bluff top setback area. Is that correct? None of the proposed new features like awnings or the facade restoration or those items are within 50 feet. Um, repainting, which is repair and maintenance of the structure, some of that does fall within that category, but it, the, that type of work is exempt um, from a coastal development permit as repair and maintenance, even in that location. Okay. So they, they've, uh, they've complied with what they ne needed to do. I mean, who's... That who prepared that report was that at the city's at the city's request or is that the applicant? And there was some distinction between the applicant's bluff top assessment assessment and the city's assessment. Is there two separate assessments that are required? So the applicant does um, provide that to the city, which is um, peer reviewed by our geotechnical um, consultant um, to verify that the information in the report is accurate. So um, it was submitted as all bluff top analyses are the this process is the applicant would submit that it's peer reviewed for um, compliance by the city. Um, and that's what you have presented as part of the staff report. So for tonight, tonight's application, we're okay with the bluff top determination and the amount of work that's being proposed as, as, a, as a tonight's application. Correct. Future work may need to be, uh, you know, a re review to see whether or not it's, uh, actually within the bluff top setback or would require a variance or other potential issues. Correct. When it's submitted, we'll take a look at that. Okay. Um, I think that's the only questions I have at this point. Oh, sure. I, I was just curious, the Cult Heritage Committee's recommendations, have those been provided to the applicant and has there been a con any kind of discussion between staff and the applicant in terms of those recommendations? Definitely. And I think that they'll um, probably touch upon those in their presentation. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Um, the applicant team now, uh, you have your time. I don't know how, how you can either, I guess, come up and sit at the table. You can stand at the podium, whatever is easiest for you. Can we all come up together? Uh, sure, but you have to speak one at a time. <laughs>
Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Kluchin. I'm with the controlling ownership of Hotel Laguna. And uh, thank you, Commission, for your time and for reviewing our application. Um, I stand here before you um, to let you know that we've been working extremely hard uh, since August of last year to um, put together a proposal um, to revitalize and reopen Hotel Laguna. Um, it starts with hiring uh, experts and professionals uh, who work in the field, such as the architects that we work with, Oatman Architects, who have vast experience in hospitality and design, as well as interior designers, um, structural, mechanical engineers of all, all types. Um, we have submitted building plans to the city, um, which have been going back and forth in comments and review, and we're very hopeful um, in a short manner that we will start proceeding with the room renovations. Um, and to speak to that for a second, we have hired uh, Shanna Kerr, who had worked at w, uh, uh, WATG, uh, who is a senior interior designer. And um, we plan to uh, make sure that the interiors match the exteriors in terms of elegance, luxury, and historic nature. Um, we, we know how much Hotel Laguna means to the city and the community, and um, we want to make sure the inside and the outside reflect that. Um, this evening, we're here to talk about the exterior. Um, we've heard uh, from the, the community, from the commissioners, from the city, um, that they wanted a full uh, concept and designed to not piecemeal what we're presenting here today. And so that's what we tried to put together for you. Um, and we've worked hand in hand with the city over the last uh, many months to address any of their concerns and to adopt them uh, where practical to make sure that we can rehabilitate and open this hotel uh, for the city, for the community uh, of Laguna Beach um, in, a, in a manner that represents the, the um, excellence that you know the, the grand old lady commands. Um, so I would like to introduce um, Oatman Architects and Laura Oatman, who will uh, be speaking with you uh, and giving our presentation tonight about our plans for uh, the exterior of the hotel. Martina, are you going to be? Okay, so when it's next slide, I'll just. All right. Uh, commissioners, thank you so much for uh, coming out on this cold and rainy night. Hopefully we're going to make it worthwhile for you and um, have, a, have a good evening with a, a good resolution. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to present to you tonight the rehabilitation of the historic Hotel Laguna. If you could uh, give, us, talk, give us your name for the record. My, for my the record, I am Laura Oatman. I am a principal at Oatman Architects. I'm here with my husband, Homer Oatman, Max Johnson, and Alex Shebley, who are all my, our co colleagues. I'm an architect with 40 years of hotel design experience with WATG and a neighbor of yours in, don't hold this against me, Newport Beach, since 1976, and a longtime admirer and fan of Hotel Laguna. Um, we've assembled, as Michael noted, a team of some of the best engineers and interior designers um, on this project, and I think um, you're going to see some very wonderful, beautiful results once we get going on this. Um, oh, we have not turned around. Vanna, Allie, could you be Vanna White and turn around the renderings? Because they were... Uh, turned so you couldn't see them in advance, but we have here, um, just for your eyeballs, the uh, historic northeast corner, the current northeast corner, and the proposed rendering of the northeast corner, as well as the um, color material boards. Um, there's also the window sample, which is the Marvin Essentials, and I have a couple of GFRC capitals uh, columns, column capitals for, for you to look at as well. So, um, Martina? Um, I won't spend a lot of time on these slides. I'm going to whiz through them because I think most of you know a lot of this stuff, and Martina covered a lot of it in her report. Um, as you all know, the historic significance of Hotel Laguna, built in 1930, was listed on the California Register of Historical, Historical Resources in 2019, and it is a candidate for a uh, rehabilitation as opposed to a restoration. That being said, rehabilitation is, is the low bar, and we have gone above and beyond listening to your comments from a year ago, January 2023, to take this back to the period of historic significance, which um, per uh, 
historical consultants is 1930 to 1950. We narrowed in on your comments from a year ago as being 1930, the 1930s as the period of historical significance. Um, quickly, the, these are a couple of the photos from the historical uh, period of historical significance. Love the old cars. Don't like the big sign though. Um, this is one uh, from 1960s, which shows, too bad we don't have a better one, but I wanted to show the current tripartite steel and aluminum windows, which we all know and love that are out there today deteriorating before our eyes. They were put in around 1950 and they've been there for 70 years. Next slide. The existing condition, as you all know, is deteriorated severely. Um, it's, it's really sad to see the old lady looking like this. She, she needs a little uh, tender loving care and we intend to try and um, help her get back to her glory days. Um, we're restoring, as you can see, the, the awnings are, uh, the arched windows are completely covered over. We're bringing those back. Um, there's only 2% uh, of the original wind, wood windows left on this project. The rest are those um, non-historic steel windows. Next. Couple of photos of the existing interiors that we uncovered on the existing um, retail along PCH. You can see the existing transom windows above the doors. We intend to restore those. Next slide. Existing arch framing in the corner cafe. I think we had the opportunity to show you all that area. That space is very exciting, very high ceilings, original arch windows. We're very excited to get that going on that. Uh, the scope of proposed work, uh, I'm not going to go through this whole checklist because the remaining slides kind of walk us through each of these bullet points, but in interior remodel of 68 hotel guest rooms and multiple exterior facade upgrades. First of all, the overall paint nonning colors. Uh, we heard you last year. You uh, seemed to approve of, you know, verbally at least, of the colors that were being proposed. So we stuck with those. Um, we're proposing um, awnings with a, a striped feature, a natural, and then a terracotta or a rust red that's typical for the mission style. Um, we've also heard the Heritage Committee that expressed a desire to see this bas relief um, detail under the fire stair on the north elevation brought back to life. So we're repainting that trim colors. Uh, windows and glass. Uh, we don't have anything to say about that, no. <laughs> we'll just go quickly through this. Um, they are mold pairs of Marvin, Marvin Essential double hung windows. When we were tasked to look for windows and we looked for days, hours, weeks for the perfect window for this project, we were looking per what we heard a year ago for a window that looked as close as we could get it to look like those historic wood windows, same operation, same one and a half inch sill. Um, this Marvin Essential was the closest thing that we could come to, to that looked like those historic wood windows that have not been in place for is it 50 or 70 years, I think they've been. Okay, next slide. There are some precedents for uh, fiberglass windows in historic buildings. Um, there's the Franciscan School of Theology uh, built in 1927 up in Berkeley, California that was recently uh, renovated and uh, fiberglass windows were put in. The Palisades building at the Miramar Hotel in, in Santa Monica is in the process of approval. However, it has been approved by the city council um, and other, um, uh, it's cleared several hur hurdles. Now it's just gotta go before the, the planning commission. You can see in that, Picture the, um, the fiberglass prototypes on the lower two windows and up above they have their stainless steel or aluminum um, window that they're replacing. Next slide. This is just, uh, to show you the profile of the window sill. Um, we're, we're planning to replace probably, I mean, we would love to keep those historic sills, but the reality is we're probably gonna have to replace 99% of them um, with a, a a wood sill that is going to identically match the old window sills. And then the profile of the Marvin Essential, that is what really sold us on this window. It's only an inch and a half. It's very tight. It's two inches this way. It's one and a half inches that way. You can see it there. Um, you will not find another wood window or wood clad window or any other product uh, that, that is wood that matches those dimensions. Next slide. 
um, quickly. Fire escapes and ladders, obviously those need to be replaced. We're gonna make them look as close as they um, can to the current uh, existing historic fire escapes, albeit with um, code modifications, um, raising the guardrail, tightening the vertical spacing, et cetera. Next. The retail at the northeast corner, this is kind of uh, my favorite part of the project. The fact that we were able to go in there because we needed to um, restore, we had to do some structural remediation in there per our structural engineers, had to take out the ceiling. And in doing so, we realized that, wow, those arches are still there. The historic wood arches are still there. So we um, got very excited about that, decided to restore this corner and this corner is probably the preeminent corner on this building. All eyes are on it as they drive up to it. So we're very happy to be able to restore that to the 1930s. Next. The other retail spaces along PCH, we are also restoring the, um, the transom windows, the uh, sort of block awnings that were there um, originally in the 1930s um, per the, oh, next slide per the Historic Heritage Committee recommendations, they wanted to see those um, pilasters have a, have a more beautifully detailed cap, very similar to the historic photographs. So we intend to follow that recommendation and do that. Uh, the material um, we are proposing is GFRC, glass fiber reinforced concrete. And we do have some samples there in case you're a little skittish about the sound of that but I might um, ask that you consider it because it is very lightweight, very durable, strong, um, and they use reinf um, reinforced, sorry, recy recycled materials for it. So it's also green and sustainable. Next slide. Uh, per the Heritage Committee recommendations also, we have been looking at and examining all of the stucco. There's a lot of different types of stucco around the building. It definitely needs to be remediated. We need to make sure that it, it all matches as close as possible to the historic stucco, which we have been told is close to what the second and third floors on this particular ele elevation um, represent. Um, it will take a little work, um, uh, some sort of very light, gentle <laughs> sandblasting where they use, uh, per the historic uh, brief, they use glass beads instead of sand. So we will do this um, per the preservation brief, briefs uh, recommendations for a repair of historic stucco. Uh, the rooftop tower, this came up um, in conversation with some of the community members that they wanted to make sure that that tower is paid attention to. Right now, you know, we were happy to see that a lot of the um, original, the finials and the roof tiles, a lot of the original is still there. The one piece that is missing is that weather vane on top, and we are more than happy to put that on for you guys. Um, we're not proposing to restore that big, heavy sign that was up there um, for a variety of reasons. Next. Um, also, the Heritage Committee suggested that we have a historic monitor, um, which would be uh, somebody, a historic consultant, probably somebody like Robert Chattel, if not Robert Chattel, who might be coming in monthly to do an extensive report with a, a memo, with photographs, um, also coming in any time there is a submittal or an RFI throughout the construction process. And just adding on to this, which is not what they suggested, but I do wanna say that our team is happy to meet with any and all of you at any time throughout this process. We want to be open, open lines of communication. So if you've ever got an issue or a problem as, as you see it, whether it's during the design process or the construction process, we are more than happy to hear your concerns. Next. This was talk, talked about a little bit um, by George and we are more than happy to consider putting in some sort of public art there. It is obviously a blank canvas right now. You look at it and it is crying out for something. We've got a variety of different sort of fuzzy, blurry images from the um, postcards, historic postcards. So it won't be exactly identical to that, but we will definitely set some specific parameters um, in conjunction with, uh, with our historic consultant to make sure that, that we can um, ask for something there for a, a public art piece that is appropriate. Okay. 
signage, as we said, um, was not included in the submittal um, because there's still some research to be done on those vertical signs. We intend to put those vertical signs back in, but we need to do a little bit more research on what that material was, the exact size and dimensions and uh, the weight and just a little bit more research. So that, that will be a separate submittal. Next. Quickly through the renderings, this is the one that you've all probably seen already, that northeast corner. But as you spin around, we have done all four sides, four corners, you can spin it around. Oh, this we actually added after the Heritage Committee um, because we recognized that we couldn't really see that, um, that full PCH elevation very well. So this really portrays what that elevation looks like. You can spin it around a little more, shows a little bit more of the awnings there, um, the Rose Garden, um, which will be a separate submittal later. We're going to be working um, with a landscape architect on that, but that is, again, not a part of this submittal. Um, that is the, <laughs> the area that we don't want to touch right now, that, that area that is facing the ocean that, um, that has some issues. So next, and finally. Finally, our ask um, is to adopt the staff report recommendation for approval. Um, I know you guys are tired. I, I know you've been looking at this building and you've been looking at this project for a long time. And we wanna get this done. We are excited about this project. We are excited to get this open again. And I know you are too. And so I'm asking that you give it some serious consideration. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy, particularly around the window material, but um, I'm hoping that we can resolve that tonight and move forward uh, with an approval and get this done and open for the community and for all the businesses. Thank you. I did pretty well, 35 seconds left. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, before you sit, sit down, I just ask uh, if the commissioners have any questions of the applicant team at this point. Uh, yeah, I got a couple. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Ali, I want you there. Martina, do we do you, do we have that little reference slide that uh, you can maybe yes put up? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oops, that was not the right from the beginning. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so I had a couple of questions uh, on the uh, east elevation uh, down towards the ocean. There is two more arched uh, window treatments there. Uh, they do appear in quite a few of the historic images from the uh, period of significance. Um, what is your, is is that something that you're planning on doing? Sorry, which specifically? So if you, if you look at this, um, the ones that are closest to the ocean on, yeah, right in there, those, there, there's a couple more arched uh, uh, windows with awnings. Is, is that part of your uh, comprehensive plan? Not at this time. Um, ideally, obviously, we would like to include that at a later date. Right now, there are some things going on at that end of the building that um, would preclude the ability to really restore those windows because uh, I don't, I'm not sure what was behind there previously. And I'm sure it was something very beautiful and, and pretty, and maybe it was part of the restaurant. But now it's back of house kitchen um, with a lot of stacked up boxes and um, our intention on that whole side is just to clean it up. Um, it's a it's a mess right now, but it it's a functional mess. Mm -hmm. it, we need a trash, you know, a place for the trash. We need a place for delivery. Um, we intend to just smooth it out, paint it white. There's a lot of what you don't see in this postcard. A lot of thick foliage down there, so you really don't see it. I will add one thing that the arch. The archways do exist in those locations. Yeah. Um, so while the awnings aren't there, uh, the archways do in fact exist in that location. And so, so would you be? Well, I, this is a rehabilitation project. If we were going, 
This is a rehabilitation project, and we haven't investigated the restoration of everything back there. There are, we don't know if there are windows there. Um, we do know that along that path, it is back a house, but there are, is a lot of uh, landscaping there, um, maybe the cities. I don't know if it's be feasible to take that out, uh, if that's something the city wants to look into. Um, but, you know, that those two back awnings are, you are currently covered up by a lot of trees that are quite tall. So um, there, there is the, the roundabout awnings for the windows, um, but uh, we haven't investigated whether it, it, it would be there or the windows are still there. Okay. Um, as far as the fire escape on that same side, there's, there's a, there's a different detail and it shows up in a, a number of different, uh, slides. Can we, can we have that black and white one perhaps? Yeah. You can see it clearly in this. Um, is that something you're planning on doing? Um, maybe we could have a conversation really about rehabilitation versus restoration. I'm Robert Chattel. I'm the historic preservation consultant, and I'd like to give you some advice. Would that be appropriate now? Depends on the advice. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, as long as it's geared towards the, the, the question, it would, to, I would say it's, it's more testimony than advice. I but. do believe that everything you're now looking at in marked up pictures, I think it's great that you've looked closely at the building. So have we. It is my job. I'm a historic architect. I, too, have 40 years experience. I have a master's degree in historic preservation. This is what I do every single day. OK, so I know a lot about how to interpret the secretary of the interior standards. That's why I'm on this team. That's why we do work all over the Western United States. This is what we do. So this is a rehabilitation project. Rehabilitation is used for buildings that are in a state of deterioration that are vacant, that need to be reoccupied. That is the case here. This is not a museum restoration. It is not intended for interpretive purposes. Typically of most projects like it, um, rehabilitation combines some elements, of rehabilita some elements of rehabilitation and reuse, some elements of restoring to a particular period in time, and some reconstruction. So the four treatments are preservation, rehabilitation, restoration, and reconstruction. They work like a pyramid. The least invasive approach is preservation. Preservation means maintenance. That means maintaining exactly what you have. That's not what's proposed here. We're proposing to make some changes, some changes to improve the character of the building. So rehabilitation puts a property back into a state of utility. That's what this building needs, okay? Um, restoration is more invasive than rehabilitation. Restoration is to return a property by removing later alterations. We don't really have later alterations to literally remove. We have, um, you know, the infill of the windows needs to be removed, but we don't have the original wood windows. This discussion of wood windows for restoration versus rehabilitation with a substitute material is really misplaced. We don't have the wood windows. If we had the wood windows, we would absolutely have a discussion. We would do a window survey, which is what we do on most of our projects. It's unusual to have all the windows have been previously replaced. That is unusual. What's come down to us is a building that's been altered. We're trying to bring back its historic character. Typically, in a rehabilitation project, it anticipates the economics of a project, the need to be able to maintain it long-term, those are the challenges of this particular project. So restoration is more invasive than rehabilitation and reconstruction than most. I think we all understand that, but I, I don't think you do with all due respect. Okay. But I'm happy you. to now review each of the other items. You've asked now for additional items to quote unquote be restored. We I'm now just asking have... what the intention is. It is not to restore those items. I understand the difference between restoration and, reno and renovation. <clears throat> Correct. So if, if the if the applicant's response is that there is no intent to to do that, that is that is all we're looking for during this line of questioning. Thank you. I have the right to ask questions. Absolutely. And and, and, and you can Absolutely. answer them however you want, but you don't have to get aggressive and with this and act act like we're a bunch of dummies up here. With all due respect, I no don't think you are respecting questions. Chair, I think I think we should either 
take a brief recess to cool things down or uh, re-engage with just the line of simply play. asking questions. Correct. Please go ahead and we're happy to answer any questions you have. And I, I asked one and it hasn't been answered yet. And can you it has to do with the detail on the fire escape. The balconies have all been removed and with the renovations that we're doing to the fire escapes to make them more code compliant, it would not be feasible to restore the balconies with the proper proportions that you see in this photograph meeting the current code. That's all I was asking. For. Uh, also, uh, in the same slide, uh, the uh, corner planter, the raised planter, uh, was not the original idea there. And there is some interesting detail there. I'm wondering if uh, or, uh, if that would be, or the your applicant applicants would be open to uh, going back to what it shows in, in in a couple of these original postcards in this particular photograph as well. We are happy to have that discussion. Um, it is more historic, obviously, going all the way back to removing the planter and just having the low um, the low planter. But um, there's probably a reason that they added that planter and the reason that a lot of people will add a raised planter as opposed to just a flat planter is because it it keeps uh, it keeps the dogs out. It, it keeps uh, the, the kids out. It kind of protects the plants more when you have a planter. That being said, we're not married to the idea of the planter either. We are, I mean, we're open to discuss that and we're open to your recommendations on the planter or the lack thereof. Thank you. Oh, one more question. <laughs> Getting back to the windows. Uh, I know that you're, uh, I think they're proposed as being double, double glazed um, versus a laminated uh, window. And I, I know there's been some concerns about the potential reflectivity of of the windows at nighttime uh, when they have a double glazed uh, treatment versus uh, a laminated treatment, which the laminated treatment also, um, I, I believe, would reduce um, road noise as well. So can you address that a little bit? So we actually um, provided a slide that that touched on this a little bit, but we actually have, it's a low transmittance rating of 74%, which is to mimic the look of the original windows. Um, or you'd have to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it's, it's very comparable to what would have been the reflectance back in 1930s. Okay. Who's staying? One more oh, time. sorry. It's me. But which way? Right up next. The one that has windows with the window. That one. Yeah, yeah. There's the light transmission level of 72% and external reflection value of 11%, um, which matches the historic. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. The glazing is specified at a visible light transmission level of 72%, external reflection value of 11%, which is matching the historic glazing as closely as we can. So it will. Thank you. Uh -huh. I, I, I'd, I'd actually like to move away from the windows for a moment because I think we're gonna have a lot of dialogue on that. Um, <laughs> could, you, could you give a little bit of color on, and I know it's not, it's not within the purview of our um, decision-making tonight, what happens on the interiors, but I think it would be very helpful for us and for the public just to get a sense of what you're thinking on the interiors relative to the exterior. Um, there's been talk about the, the corner with the arches. Um, that's a very important corner. Um, and maybe talk about how you might activate that corner, um, you know, in terms of livening up the hotel. Um, my question is really, can you give a sense of the essence of the project that you're trying to do overall um, once you get this approved uh, on the exterior? Um, for people to have a sense of what you're thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah, we hired um, Shauna Patel, who is a, an experienced hotel interior designer to do all of the plans for our interiors. She's doing fantastic work. I kind of wish I could show you all those drawings, but we felt like it would sort of muddy the water to, to bring all that in and, you know, 
our focus right now tonight is on the exterior facade. That being said, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, and we will have to figure out a way that we can get you in front of Shauna, and maybe she could do a separate presentation um, to show you her drawings, her mood vibe boards. They are very um, elegant. They're more modern than they are tradi or traditional. They're contemporary. However, there's a lot of uh, reflection on the past in the framed old photographs and that sort of thing. I mean, honestly, the, the rooms are small and you have to be creative and you have to have a creative mind in order to make those rooms feel comfortable because previously it was just the tiniest little bathroom with a tiny little you know, powder uh, uh, sink and toilet. And um, we pushed that out. We enlarged it just a bit as much as we could without compromising the, the guest room. We have, um, she has planned for a, a built-in sort of wall uh, unit, which incorporates a television and a desk and a safe and a mini bar and everything that you could possibly imagine. I wish I had, I wish I had the, the drawings for you, but um, I know that you might be concerned that a modern interior might not fit with a more traditional exterior, but there are multiple examples of historic buildings in downtown LA in San Francisco in Boston and in Miami, I won't even, I mean, I put together a whole presentation right. for you on that, where we've got the historic building, but everybody wants a soft, comfortable bed. Everybody wants, you know, a big shower. Um, nobody really wants a historic guest room anymore. So. And to, to add to that, um, you know, we, we do understand that the interiors um, should reflect th the elegance that Hotel Laguna presents. Um, so I did ask Shanna, who is in Paris uh, for work right now, uh, just to give some kind of description. Um, she said, for the style of the hotel, the style is luxurious, soft, contemporary with vintage and period touches to speak to the exterior of the building and its historic significance. The color scheme is creamy white, soft black and gray with accents of soft blue. The white and black is to emphasize the vintage feel of the space with a creamy white and softer black chosen to keep the space warm and inviting. The soft black and gray and blue accents is inspired by the location on the beach and the ocean. We are planning on using some vintage photos of Laguna Beach and artwork and graphics that are reminiscent of the ocean and the waves. So just at a high level without going into our in interior proposal, we're trying to capture the essence of this historic building while making it contemporary and inviting for guests as well. What was Shana's last name? Her last, Kerr. Kerr. -E K. E R R, and she had set up her own shop um, with SM Design Associates. She worked at WATG as a senior designer for many years on many hotels. Yeah, th thank you. Um, one question is the I think you've hit on some of the her the uh, Heritage Committee's points, but is it my understanding that other than the windows, you basically agree with all of their other recommendations? We do. We're happy to incorporate their other recommendations. Okay. And I just want to go back to um, uh, George's observation of that back corner. And, you know, when I, when we met, you know, I pointed out that it's, it's really the worst part of the whole experience around the building. And it's, and I walked down there and looked at it and it's, it, it's really bad. I, I, could you expand a little bit? I mean, I, on one end you would have the, the whole restoration of the postcard, right? With the awnings and the arches and regardless of what's back there, you know, and clean all that up, understanding that's kind of in conflict with kind of the function of that end of the building. The other end is of the, is, is not doing anything other than maybe putting a, a coat of paint on it. Are you going to do something about that area that's going to kind of clean it up? Because thousands of people walk th through there, you know, every weekend because it's the only way of getting to, downtown from the beach how, how can we work on that sure um well a few things um uh, one we would have to go through coastal if we're going to do any modifications to the exterior of the building um so that is that is one part of consideration we definitely want to clean it up right it should look nice it should be clean when people walk past we have a um we last summer we opened up uh the um, 
like we called it the boardwalk shack, which back in the 60s used to serve hot dogs and food. We've cleaned up an area that there's a window that actually can serve guests to, that go to the beach. Um, and we opened that up last year and we'll have it open again this summer. So we want that area clean, but to be able to remove some of those steps that are broken and the tiles that are broken, um, I, I think painting it and just cleaning it up and maybe enclosing some of the, the back of house stuff like the trash cans and things of that nature, because that is a delivery space for us. Um, and, you know, we don't we don't have quite a lot of space, right? It was built in 1930 and we have to work with what we have. Um, you have my commitment that we're going to work to clean it up and make it presentable where people don't walk past it and be like, this is gross um, because kind of that is a situation now. Um, but that's one of the reasons we're here. So we can get approval to paint the building, to do some of these things on the exterior. As far as the awning is concerned, like I mentioned, I think just off the top of my head, there's a lot of landscaping back there that I don't think would be practical to put an awning with there's large trees that kind of cover up that back part of the hotel. Um, we're happy to look into what can be done with that landscaping, what could be done, what is behind those um, kind of already enclosed um, parts of the building. We don't know if there's windows there. We don't know. What, know the, one of the things we chatted about was, you know, is there an opportunity to do a minor embellishment of maybe some public art or something? There is There is some blank wall space back there. Absolutely. And, I'd, I'd say absolutely. I mean, we'd in be, other words, we'd be open to it. I mean, it, just to kind of counter be a counterpoint to the functionality, the, the brutal functionality of the rest of it. You know, could there be just like this something nice, you know, that people see as they walk along the sidewalk, it's right on axis. And it kind of announces that we actually do care a little bit about this space. And, and uh, the other question is, and I guess this isn't in your purview, but I'm just wondering if it isn't too dark back there. And it is really dark. It is really shady. And I'm just wondering if maybe there couldn't be some, I mean, we want to keep the trees, of course, but maybe open it up a little bit. Uh, I think that's probably more of a city city question. The other thing I wanted to ask you was the um, uh, about the cafe. Um, I think I, I agree that with uh, Steve that there's a real opportunity to activate this corner, and I think you're going to do that. So I, it, the question I would have is, have, do you have any thoughts on how to really emphasize and exaggerate the activation? You know, I mean, if you had outdoor space, there'd be umbrellas, there'd be outside tables, you don't have that. Is there something you can do with the glazing where maybe it's operable and it opens up, you know, in nice weather and you see the activity inside the, you know, the restaurant to actually ex to extend that activity out onto that corner and really bring it to life? I think we're really just hoping that the arches do that. I mean, that's what sold the corner back in the 1930s. It drew people in in its own. That's also why we're providing awnings in the locations that we're doing to really announce where the storefronts are from the public way. So that's a no. You don't, you don't think you could do operable windows and open it up? Oh. Sure, come on. Come on. Uh, relative to the planter. Where are you? Uh, you got a statement. Hi, I'm Homer Oatman, so the lesser half of uh, our partnership. Um, addressing the planter that exists. There, and I'm not talking about the planter. Well, it does have something to do with okay. it. You're okay. talking about having operable windows. You can't have casement windows that swing out into the pedestrian right of way. But maybe that is why those planters were there, possible reason, because they move the pedestrian right of way out sufficient that you could have casement windows swing out um uh, just just a thought the, the yeah so that's the, something to consider because i know the uh, planner itself the raised planner is an issue the other thing that we talked about was that the um in my mind some windows are more important than other windows right and the windows facing pch you know are in my mind the top priority because that's where the most and closest encounter is and of those windows the the most encounter is on the ground level and if if i were to say well you know if we wanted to take a stand on windows to me those would be the windows uh, i'm trying to turn this into a question okay that let me turn it into a question now 
would, could, would you consider maybe taking that, those windows that are at pedestrian level that really speak to the quality of the retail experience and the pedestrian experience along the street and consider an enhanced treatment there, uh, including wood or a more elaborate kind of, um, you know, window design? We are open-minded to something that on, on the first floor to consider something that is more along the lines of what you're speaking. Um, we have our position on on what we am, are proposing on the, the windows for the rooms. Um, but if the question is on the first floor and the, the retail space and the corner space, are we, are we, would we be open-minded to that? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. That's concludes my questions. Great. Commissioner Whiten. Continuing along that elevation in that same vein, um, I agree. I think the ground level where you're up close and can actually touch things and see, see the detail of materials is the important level. Um, and I would love to see all of the window material revert to the original of, of the 1930s including starting at the other end, the retail spaces going up the hill would have been meant metal framed glass windows. Right now they're aluminum, I believe, and the proposal is to paint them. Would you be open to replacing those? Uh, in addition, would you be open to finding if, if it doesn't exist deep in the bowels of the building somewhere, uh, finding an original or period appropriate front door, because I think, you know, that's your first impression and, and, uh, and it, it's not a good one that, that exists there now. So, uh, and the arched windows, um, I'm not a fan of the GFRC. I don't know if you're open to precast or concrete for, for those arches. I think where they're, you're up close, it should be real material. Um, so are you open to that d discussion, ongoing discussion? No, but I, I know GFRC. <laughs> um, we, we will do whatever makes you all happy. <laughs> uh, we discovered something just in the last day or two that all of the um, ornamentation that goes around the arches. We're looking at the ones that are down by the um, by the water, the, those two sort of lost ones in the trees. And they appear to be uh, uh, concrete plaster that was hand tooled. And we were looking at it, it's kind of rough mm -hmm. that they probably took a blade which is carved in the shape and they just slapped that stuff up there and a guy took it and you know very carefully did it. So it's an old fashioned way of doing it. And I was talking to um, a contractor that's uh, out there that's just trying to get things squared away. He's basically a project manager and director. And uh, he's familiar with that. He knows people who do that. So if that is what it is, that's what we'll do. But we work with GFRC. We work with other forms of uh, precast on our projects, and we'll do what's right. Mm -hmm. And how about the retail, um, the retail windows and doors, replacing the, what exists with a more? <laughs> um, I would say yes. We would be open to it. But I do want to stress that we're looking at the totality of the building and the presentation we we gave tonight. And we spent a lot of time and put in a lot of effort to try to listen to the comments from you last year and from Heritage Committee and the community at large, as well as the city um, planning department. And we have really worked to provide what we think is a really practical um, working product that can rehabilitate and get this hotel open and operating uh, and functioning and drawing guests back to Laguna Beach and to this hotel. Um, as it relates to those specific questions, 
Yes, we're we uh, on the first floor and and those welcoming areas. Absolutely, I think we can have a, a further discussion. But I wouldn't want to take it away from um, moving forward here uh, to get the work started. Uh, that certainly wouldn't be my goal. Uh, how about the level of detail uh, on uh, and the, what I think are the three significant detailed areas: the cupola, which you mentioned, uh, Laura mentioned that that you would. You, you you'd add the um the vein to the top but there are other there is more detail than that on the original cupola is it possible that we could see a return to that original detail yes we um have been studying all of that original detail and that is something that we are very excited to, to do. Um, I know that at this point in the design process we don't have all of these elaborate details drawn yet but I was thinking today that we have to produce a signage package. And a lot of the reason we didn't do the signage at this juncture is because we don't have those details yet. So maybe we do um, a, a separate submittal that shows the sign details and the wall sconce and the tower and, and the weather vane and all these little details that have kind of, that you're not seeing or that you want to see with more clarity, we can put that together into a package. Um, and we could certainly tonight agree upon a list of things that you would like to see. And we, and that could be a part of our um, uh, approval, hopefully. Okay, I won't, get, I, I won't get into that right now, but okay. uh, uh, will you be providing the city with a sample that can be approved of what, however this shakes out the final window detailing? That's it. That's the window. Well, the windows the on the story. street streetscape, or the windows on the upper story. The upper stories. Upper stories. So this intended, is it. That's our intended. Oh. There were details provided in the package, the architectural package. Well, but this doesn't show us the center mullion dividing and the width of that. And and actually, aren't those window openings different dimensions? Some of them are smaller and some of them They're are all, wider. They're all generally the same within an inch. Are they? Yeah. Okay. All right. But I mean, the ultimate thing we'd want to know the exact dimensions of everything. Sure. Um, Martina, at the end of our um, slide presentation, we have some additional slides that show some window information that might be um, of interest. Oops. How does it keep? Going away. Okay, I have a question for the uh, city attorney. Um, if the applicant were to come back in the future with these changes we've talked about at the northwest corner toward the beach, the north elevation on the beach and the two arched windows and that whole service area, if they were to come back, would that constitute a piecemeal? In other words, what we're we're making approval tonight, based, uh, you know, on, on our comments and our conditions, but there is nothing that shows improvement to that end of the building. It's basically going to stay the way it is. So if in so we're approving that as it is. So the, uh, can they come back with another application without that being a piecemeal situation? Correct. So the as I kind of touched on briefly before the, the the idea of piecemealing and once again it's that the city and then tonight the city decision making body being yourselves knows that there is a larger project or more components to a project and for purposes of you know whatever are purposely being cut up into smaller pieces and then approved that way um i can't say that you know if they apply for a tonight today that in six months if they come back for b they're prohibited that's that, that that's kind of not the way it works piecemealing requires that we as the city have knowledge and have an understanding that there is going to be an another you know another discretionary application in the pipeline coming down quickly and in that instance you know i i, I can't say it's always a case-by-case -case basis so i can't say hey it's if they wait six months it's good or if they wait 90 days 
that's unfortunately not really how the how the 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 law works. So the idea of a of a piecemealing situation, I believe that was the vernacular that, that you used, really isn't, you know, it's it it is prospective looking, but it's only if we have knowledge. And, and we so do. right now we're having a discussion about this and and sort of making general commitments that yeah, the area needs to be looked at. And yes, it should be improved. And we're gonna have a trash container. I mean, we spend we deliberate about design of trash sure. containers. And so we know that at the very least is something that has to come back to us. And so therefore it's not a part of this application. I'm just trying to keep things on track and not get into a derailment situation um, because uh, this could be challenged. And, and, and no matter what we do, it is always subject to appeal. It is always subject to, to challenge. If the if the if the planning commission tonight feels that that is the appropriate move or appropriate decision, of course I'm not going to stand in the way of that. I'm simply reiterating what the 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 piecemealing analysis is that a court would do. Um, and once again, that's not dispositive. If you all want to take a more conservative approach, that is of course your prerogative. Okay. May I add? We've proposed. Uh, the scope of what we're looking for approval on. And I believe it was laid out in the, the four different things that that were presented initially with the windows and um, the corner. And I can't remember them off the top of my head, but that's what we're asking for approval on tonight. And that's what we're moving forward with. And there there always could be things where you have questions. We, we have already said that we are going to sub be submitting a sign uh, signage proposal for planning and that was in discuss with in in our conversations with the planning department about are we going to include it or not um and it wasn't something that that we both agreed on that should be included so we ask that you approve what we came here and proposed tonight in terms of those items so that we can get started on those if there are other things that you feel strongly about that's your prerogative are there going to be other exterior modifications that you're going to be coming back with at a later date besides the signage and probably landscape um no not the uh courtyard elevation to re bring back the arches in the courtyard you, that's not a part of what you're thinking about i don't okay. think so at this time okay so. and, and if, if just a clarification on this whole issue which is very confusing by the way um, I mean, if we approve the a project with a condition that a certain aspect of it needs to come back for a final review, that is not piecemealing. Correct. That is okay. The, thank the, you. We condition it yeah. so we can continue. Okay. I, I, okay. I have. I just have one more thing. You said um, that you were glad to come back and meet, um, but I didn't hear the word public meetings or planning commission. Um, uh, do you intend to come back? on an iterative basis and keep the planning commission updated on um, the development of, of the, the facades. I would say we're happy to come back and keep you updated and informed on our status as we proceed. Uh, absolutely. In, in the public uh, for planning commission, as far as um, coming in each time for approval to move from step A to step B to step C. I don't think that's what you're asking. Um, I don't think that's what is contemplated. Right, right. And and if I could add, Mr. Sure. Chair, so the, you know, the, the request for project updates, I, I, I totally understand that. What we can't really do, though, is 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 kind of in, in theory. I understand there's, you know, discussion to be had, approve something and then have them keep coming back and and say no you got to change this that's that, that's kind of not how the, the the public hearing and then and an approval process works so if there is a desire for submitting reports submitting presentations that would be fine but those are informational only they wouldn't be they wouldn't allow the planning commission to make subsequent modifications or changes or saying hey you know back on march 6 2024 maybe we got something wrong therefore let's change it hmm. okay okay thank you um, uh, and uh, just to dovetail in uh, on a couple of the other commissioners' comments, um, the, the arched moldings that are going to go in that corner uh, where the cafe is, obviously those are something you're going to have to have made. Um, 
would it be something that uh regardless of whether there's windows underneath them or if it's just a solid wall or whatever at the beach end of that same uh elevation of uh just doing an application of those archways uh just to try to uh, si uh simulate the original design down there whether there's and i'm not talking about awnings i'm just talking about the moldings themselves it certainly needs to be repaired right now so we we would look at doing that but again i would defer to martina to make uh, let us know if we're getting into an area of uh within the bluff top range that might trigger um coastal we're, we're trying to avoid that and as long as we're just doing repair and painting i don't think that that would be triggered and i I know what you're talking about. That arch that's down there now is crumbling and falling apart. So we would certainly, that would be part of our repair and maintenance okay. down there. Yeah. And also um, in relation to just the ground floor, uh, and I know uh, Commissioner White, and I think was touching on this as well, um, since those are fairly accessible, either just standing there or on a ladder, uh, would you be willing to all the ground floor uh window trim and moldings be wood, all wood, painted wood. You're talking about the, um, the, ret the retail space in the cafe. We're open-minded, but again, um, to, be to be honest, I, I don't know if this is a negotiation of <laughs> will you guys agree to this and we'll go, you know, we'll prove it. These we're are just open, questions we're asking. That we're way. we're open minded to it, but again, you know, our proposal is our proposal. As far as the first floor, um, I, we're we we are very open minded to that. Is the front facing where people are uh, coming, seeing, touching, feeling, and um, there there is a lot that we are willing to do to uh, restore things at Hotel Laguna. So yeah, that's a yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a recommendation from the Heritage Committee, so I'm just, I'm just, uh, we're we're trying to sort of uh, hit some compromises here so that the project can move forward. Um, you know, we're understanding that this is not a restoration, that it's a renovation. So, uh, but we're trying to achieve the, you know, as much as we can, the original appearance of the building. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a little give and take at this point in terms of. Uh, what's going to happen. So I'm just asking the questions, uh, you know, whether the response is a yes or no, that's, that's your prerogative to. Sure. I, I would say your question on, on that first floor, um, we are amenable because a lot of that doesn't have the same, uh, impacts as far as maintenance and repair and cleaning right. and other items that we have really considered, uh, for the windows, for the rooms. So as the, the facing, on the street level, it's a lot more um, doable, and we're we're we would be absolutely willing to consider that. Project. Okay. And my my very last thing: um, Did the Heritage uh, Committee opine at all on the uh, striped awnings versus uh, what appears in the uh, in some of the older? Um, I don't. Martina, can you say if they gave the recommendation? I think there were differing there... opinions. I think some wanted them to be solid, and some were fine with the stripe. What during the meeting there was discussion. However, when they went to make a motion, there wasn't a recommendation to modify it as proposed. So they accepted the awnings as proposed. Um, but there was discussion at the meeting, um, and they considered it. But they ultimately didn't decide to recommend modification to the plan. Uh, would that be something you would be open to? A solid color versus stripes? Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, my turn to ask some questions. Uh, you know. And this is, I'll start off with the question, and I think I already know the answer. In, in the courtyard area, um, there's, uh, I guess, on the back side of the retail space, that side of the courtyard, there's some really just re relatively cheesy, you know, aluminum sliding glass doors that are there. And, you know, so, and I, I'm guessing uh, the answer is that there is no current proposal to do anything with those, to, there, to leave those as is. Well, those retail spaces are going to be rehabbed and those, I don't believe those doors will be there. I don't, I don't off the top of my head, I can't speak to if that's part of the building submittal, 
Um, it obviously wasn't for planning, but I think our intention is to change those doors. And um, you want to well, here's here's why I'm even asking that question, and it goes back to the other side, just the re on the coast highway side, those mm -hmm. retail spaces. We've got these existing current metal framed mm -hmm. windows that are not historic in any sort of way. And mm -hmm. here, you know, we can all agree that this this building's almost 100 years old. It's it's a historic resource. Mm -hmm. We're we're at least trying to do a historic rehabilitation of this building, mm -hmm. and yet the most prominent closest to street level in your face thing is not being proposed to be modified in any way mm -hmm. to make it come any closer to its historic period of significance mm -hmm. correct and, and that no, doesn't that there, seem there things doesn't being, that seem odd we're proposing uh, several things there but i agree i don't believe that painting those windows is going to suffice and i think that's why we're having this conversation we could potentially do um, new uh, anodized aluminum, dark bronze, similar to what might have been a, a metal window in that period, or potentially, as we're talking, we could potentially do um, some custom wood windows there instead. Now, that being said, we have an operator coming on who's going to have ideas about what's going to happen in those spaces. and. Obviously, you're not going to have this beautiful entrance door and then have this just hideous, ugly door on the other side. So that would all be part of the tenant improvements that would occur when we have, when they have uh, tenants in place, when they decide if it's going to be a. Okay, a I'm just trying to, or... to give you a sense of our our struggle here as right. we're trying to we're looking at this, you know, a historic resource, trying to bring it back to you know, a certain period of significance, which when, you know, we went through this a year ago, wasn't really even really nailed down. You know, it seemed like it was very loose. So well, it's somewhere between the thirties and the today, you know, it's like, well, you know, that's a pretty broad range there. What are we trying, what are we shooting for here? And now we're talking about, and we're having this discussion about the guest room windows, which are on these upper floors, which, uh, you know, whether or not you're visually going to be able to tell if they're wood or look like wood or any of that, you know, it's, it's questionable. So that's, you know, th that's, that's why we're asking these, these questions and stuff and, you know, no offense to the historic consultant, but you know, that that's why we're, you know, that's why we're doing what we're doing. But um, I would say, I think it's been brought up by multiple com commissioners tonight about the first floor, the type of windows and type of uh, doors that we would be willing to consider that weren't initially in our proposal. And I think I've given the answer uh, multiple times that um, that's absolutely something we can work with you on. Um, I hear you, I hear that you are looking for certain types of features and I don't think that would be a problem with us. Okay. Um, the, as you know, it's been said, this building's approaching a hundred years old now. Um, walking around the building, you know, the, the stucco itself of the entire building is is not in great shape. It, it's approaching a hundred years old. Stucco does not last forever. You know, was any consideration given to completely stripping the building down to uh, its studs and and restuccoing the entire building? Well, cost aside, it would probably extend the uh, duration of construction by about a year. So okay, that, I realize it's a big building. That's, that's a, a lot of stucco. That's you know, a major and, consideration. And, but this is, is, is paint, re painting and repatching hundred year old stucco going to be a, a really adequate and appropriate rehabilitation of this extra? And you know, make it clear because we got in some correspondence with some people that were talking about. You know, some yeah. you know mentioning masonry in this building. This this, this is a wood frame building. You know, maybe it, there's some steel in there, but it's it's primarily a wood frame bearing wall building with a stucco exterior. You know, stucco is just the exterior wall treatment. You know, so it's. I would agree, but as you know, historic consultants and historians, and certainly the heritage uh, committee looks at that stucco a little differently than you and I do. They, it's historic stucco. They want us to treat it with kid gloves. And so, and that's understandable. We just, at the end of the day, just want to make it 
com, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Consistent. Consistent, a consistent texture as it was historically. It doesn't have to all come off. Okay. Um, and we just want to do as the Heritage Committee suggested. There was some um, correspondence. Go ahead if you had. I was going to say, speaking to the longevity of the stucco as it exists right now, we actually had a waterproofing consultant come through the building and he was amazed at the interior condition of most of the wood studs where we did see water intrusion which was impacting the building it was related to the sills and how water was actually infiltrating through the sill condition not the actual stucco and the makeup of the walls waterproofing the type of paint well there's been some back and forth as we've met with each of the commissioners but there is a um, a paint, finally, it's going to be paint finish over the stucco that we put there. It is an acrylic-based, um, but it's acrylic-based, breathable. And um, so that, I, I know there was some expression that people do not like the term elastomeric, and it, it is a, has a visual issue, and then there's... Uh, vapor issues with that but this is a breathable paint so you don't have the same issues with um water moisture in the building and the exact specification is a hundred percent acrylic and it's a vapor permeable elastomeric paint okay um and lastly i guess my last question is you know getting back to these windows again i believe you know all the exterior walls are uh two by six uh, stud framed walls. So we have, you know, at least five and a half inches of, of width of wall there to work with. So I'm, you know, uh, I'm not understanding the, 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 the constraint in the, the, the overall width of the window assembly. What doesn't that give us plenty of room to work with many different types of windows? Well, that's the depth of the wind of the, uh, frame and sash it's the width of the frame and sash as you look at it right face on that the historic windows uh by robert chattel's estimation was only about two and a quarter inches wide whereas most wood windows today uh are going to be about three and a half inches minimum it's just a, it's a chunkier heavier profile Okay. 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 It's it's the reveal around the the edges. How much exposed frame is hash you have? So, like for example, Marvin has a whole series of historic window replacements that are some of some of which are are wood based. So, in your opinion, none of those would work. They don't achieve that desired effect and uh a lot of windows if you go back east and i know ali has worked a lot of her career back east um the windows are this thick they're not like this to, to my experience that's extremely unusual for a wood framed window okay yeah. Mart martina can you pull up the uh y fiberglass slide it's after the renderings and I don't know if this is really any consideration in the, the window replacement as well, but it was brought up at one of our, our previous meetings that the traditional, very old wood double hung window in many cases had had a like pulley system counterweight system yeah, to to actually operate the window and that Marvin and their historic windows have some something similar to that where they're trying to replicate that or the look of it or something mm -hmm. and and from the interior side of, of the window, you'd have more of a traditional wood looking window that would be more traditionally operating rather than having the the little, you know, lock clips and stuff like, like this, this window is here. Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, I don't know whether or not because that's on the interior face of a window that's considered, you know, a consideration really in, in historic rehabilitation or trying to meet any mm -hmm. kind of, threshold for that or not from the interior standpoint we're actually restricted to the amount of opening that we can have so for egress purposes so we're restricted to preventing a four inch sphere from being able to penetrate it so we'll actually have restrictors on all of our windows again 
what you saw from the interior uh, for a hung window back in the 1930s. I don't know that it was visible. It could have been incorporated yeah. into the frame. Let me it, see. There's speak real. Okay. A lot of the historic windows that are provide, you know, whether it's Colby or Marvin or Lowen, et cetera, um, they are wood clad. Very rarely do you see an, a solid wood window uh, for the very reasons why we are suggesting fiberglass. Um, the original wood windows were a very different type of wood, and they were a hard wood, and they were able to get away with these really thin little um, sashes. The wood today, um, commonly used in all of these wood windows, today's windows is, is either dug fir or pine. It's soft, so it has to be thicker and clunkier and larger. And in most cases, it's clad with aluminum on the exterior. And if the argument is when you look up at the second and third floors and you want to see wood, most of the time, 99% of these windows you're looking at that are historic, you're seeing aluminum, uh, anodized aluminum. The interior, no doubt, yes, it's it's beautiful, it's wood, but it's, you know, it's a give and take, and it's not really the same style and shape and size and operation as the original. So you theater. saw nothing like that where it would be, just say maybe wood frame construction, so it would be wood on the interior and maybe, you know, metal clad on the exterior that would, would work with this these dimensions that you're trying to achieve. Would the Heritage Society or Heritage Committee want metal on the exterior i don't know if they would i don't know if they would either but i, I you know i'm you know i'm asking you know if, <laughs> yeah. if that would be a, uh, some sort I of mean, possible they're beautiful compromise. windows but they're thick and clunky now the historic windows are three by five not even five they're four foot nine these are smallish windows you're and now if this was a modern hotel you would have you just expand that thing it would be solid glass because you've got views to die for so you've already got sort of a limited opening. It's three by not five. You've got a thin little sash on the side to block the view. If you get a big old fat Colby in there or anything else like that, a, a clad window, suddenly your view plane is like two feet by three feet, which is kind of sad if you've got this gorgeous view to look at. So that was another reason why we looked at keeping those rails as thin as possible. Uh, another consideration to that is that we do a lot of uh, clad windows, Colby or Lowen, on our homes that are on the ocean. And we found that uh, they really don't last much more than 10 years because once you have that, the, the aluminum is quite thin and it's covered with, uh, it's the paint finish, whether it's Kynar or whatever. You get any nicks you get in that within the salt atmosphere here, and we're right on the ocean, it starts to eat away and you can't really you can't really fix it in, a, in an attractive way. So the longevity of those windows is not really as good as they advertise in uh, in this atmosphere. And speaking with the longevity, anytime you have a cloud product, you're marrying the different materials and they're going to have different expansion rates and different elements. So again, that feeds into the longevity where you're having materials right up against each other, expanding at different rates. That's why we've looked into a consistent material throughout the window. Okay. All right. Well, we've asked plenty of questions here and I think there's going to be some public commentary and questions and comments as well. So we'll probably move on to that at this point. And uh, when that's all done, we may have some additional questions, but thank you. Okay. Um, is everybody okay to continue? You guys want to take a break or move right into public comments? Let's keep um, rolling. Chair, if I, if I may, it's usually advisable to at least take public comment that way there's no risk of discussing amongst each other or the or the or the public so if possible i would say take public comment okay. first and then you want to take a break it's after fine with that. Me. all right uh i'll open uh the public hearing uh, any members of the public who wish to come up and speak please do so and please uh if you could remember to print your name on the sheet behind you when you're finished good evening i'm joanna bear the general manager at surf and sand resort we have been collaborating with Hotel Laguna's ownership team and look forward to operating this hotel property. On behalf of Surf and Sand and JC Resorts, we want to express our enthusiasm and support for the Hotel Laguna project. We are excited for the hotel to be remodeled and re rehabilitated, and it will be great for the entire city of Laguna Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Clark Collins, uh, Heritage Committee member, but here tonight as a resident. 
I'm overjoyed by the work that the applicant has done. It's, it's a lot. They've taken into account a lot of feedback from the community, from Heritage Committee, you name it. Um, I sent you all an email on the windows. You know how I feel. I'm not going to rehash that. There are a couple, the devil's kind of in the details as to how this is implemented though. And there are a couple of things that I would ask that you pay particular attention to. One is the stucco, which we've talked a little bit about tonight. I think uh, having, I'm not sure about sandblasting, whether it's glass beads or sand, you know, whether that meets the standards, I would probably argue that it doesn't, but I understand the need for a uniform stucco texture. What I think the risk is though, if it's not done properly is we get a smooth stucco hotel and that would be, that would not be great. That would be, that would be terrible. So I think with a, with a, his, use, it sounds like they're open to a historic consultant, putting up some samples, having those samples, having something approved so that it, I think, so that it matches the original texture on the second and the, th the third floors. I think that's going in the right direction, but something I think you want to pay particular attention to. And the other was the paint. And we talked at Heritage about Elast America. It sounds like maybe there's a solution there that's, that's breathable, but if it's not done correctly and you use a paint that doesn't breathe and you trap the moisture, you're going to have spalling, you're going to have a deterioration of the underlying concrete. And that's also a, would be an unfortunate, and that's, that's happened in Long Beach. There's a 12 story hotel there. They used a last America that was not breathable and had a horrible result. So it's just something to, to pay attention to, but, but otherwise, thank you all for your hard work and attention to detail. Thank you. All right. Next speaker. Good evening. My name is Justin Urbanski and I'm here to express my support for the project. Um, I love this building. It's very iconic. And as we all know, it really stands out in Laguna Beach. My friends and family, we all love this building. And I think that approval of this project would provide a reinvigoration of the hotel that would improve the character of the structure overall. And while I agree that it won't um, restore it exactly to what it once was, I think that this is a great step forward. And I think that um, the renovations that you've all spoken of uh, to restore the exact character of the hotel as it was once built can definitely be done at a later date. So I really encourage you guys to approve this project. I think it'll be great for the neighborhood, for Laguna Beach, and for the residents and visitors alike. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi there. My name is Nikki Honaker Bostwick, and I'm here today because I'm so excited for the Hotel Laguna project to be approved and we just can't wait for it to move forward and my only um the only thing I wanted to say is this is my first time at a planning commission meeting and I'm so impressed with the questions and the rigor in which you um, move forward with what every um every detail and I think it's just really important to just like you guys um asked to know the full scope of the project that's going to be looked at because I I would say that um, we just want the most detailed and historically accurate project to be approved as possible. And there's a lot that you guys mentioned that is really important, like the awnings and, um, and just so many different pieces that it felt it just sitting in, in the meeting that wasn't finalized at all. So that's just kind of what I wanted to share is that it just still felt a little bit incomplete, even though I personally really want this to be approved so badly and in no way would want to stop anything from moving forward because the town really wants this approved. I just feel that the full scope wasn't presented and I know that it has been worked on. Um, and so I just want you guys to see the full project that has been worked on and would like to come forward. And I know that that is something that could be um, potentially coming forward in the next couple months. So I just want you guys to know that. And I, I'm, I'm pretty much, um, I'm pretty certain that you guys have seen those designs as well, but I'm not sure. And if you haven't, I, I believe it's been submitted. So you should have copies of that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. You mentioned that we might have a, 
a little bit of extra time. Could I have an extra minute, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Kathy Yurka, and um, I too am very excited about um, this project and about the reopening of the Hotel Laguna. It is, I think, the most historically significant and iconic building in Laguna Beach. Um, I just wanted to say, um, Chair Sadler, that regarding the issue of masonry, in historic masonry refers to stucco as well um, as an exterior material. Uh, I, I do have, um, I do think you can approve this project tonight, but I do think it should be done with conditions. And you've mentioned some of the things that you would like to see at the ground floor. A, a, a very important concern uh, of mine, as you know from the email I sent, is with um, the windows. I do think these are the wrong windows for the Hotel Laguna. Um, and I do think it is really important for you to respect the opinion of the city's appointed experts on the Heritage Committee. Three of the four members who recommended approval, one uh, had to recuse himself, um, they are two architects and a designer who work on many historic rehabilitation projects within the city of Laguna Beach. And I, I found myself disappointed that staff seem to me to undermine their authority by seeking additional comment from Andrea uh, Gavin, um, or Galvin, sorry, um, about what she recommended. And I was astonished that she recommended those windows, which from 25 feet away, I can tell are not wood, um, rather than just saying, oh yeah, these windows meet the standards because they've already been replaced. But I also wanna point out how inconsistent the letter that she sent you today is. She mentions that standard six um, uh, states that when uh, a historic feature is missing, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qu qualities and where possible materials. And then later she quotes um, National Park Service Preservation Brief 16, the use of matching materials to replace historic ones is always preferred under the standards for rehabilitation. When you don't do that is when it's not feasible or practical. It is completely feasible and practical to replace the windows with wood windows. We know exactly what those historic windows looked like um, due to photographic documentation. Uh, wood windows is a common material. It's not some ancient craftsmanship or ancient material that would be impossible to duplicate. Where you might argue, and I would actually not be here if this were the case, is if the Hotel Laguna were being rehabilitated as affordable housing, that would be appropriate. It is being rehabilitated as a luxury hotel. You cannot really make a claim of economic infeasibility for the replacement of wood. If you were to make that a condition, they would they would get wood um, because it's something that can be produced. Um, the proposed bronze windows are going to look exactly like what they are, which is contemporary fiberglass. Um, and that would be even more apparent if you had a simple of the entire unit and not just one, uh, one sill. There are ways to treat windows to make them uh, easier to maintain. Um, I sent you, um, and keep in mind that fiberglass windows are impossible to maintain. When they start to fail, you just discard them. Um, I sent you materials um, that, uh, regarding uh, the, those treatments. You can also use boat paint um, on an exterior window. Some boat paints are, um, are acceptable in the state of California. Uh, I, I really liked your comments about um, wood at the ground floor, but you know, there this this facade is so relatively plain. Those windows really stand out. And as the Heritage Committee noted, there are no secondary elevations on this property because it's so visible from all four sides. Was that um Is that four minutes? Okay. If you could just wrap it up. Yeah. Um. I just wanted. I. I. Do, I'm not familiar with the the glass beads treatment, but I agree with um with Clark. There should be a monitor or historic contractor watching that work because that could go very badly wrong. Also, elastomeric paint should never be used on a historic building. Um. And I'll just leave it there. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you. Hi, Michelle Monda. I'm here as a private citizen, um, but caveat, I do work with the Hotel Laguna as a volunteer. Uh, my partner, Christy Miller, and I 
looked at the windows that had been there before um, the current operator was there and it was papered over and really very um, unappealing and made the hotel look like it was abandoned. So we approached Mike Kluchin and said, we have an idea. We've got some great local artists and how about if we put some uh, paintings in the window? Jumped at the idea, said, fabulous. I cannot tell you how we had to move heaven and earth literally inside to get the paper stuff off, to get things arranged so that we could hang uh, curtains, we hung lights in there. And now when you walk by the Hotel Laguna, I think you'd all agree that not only is it a huge improvement, but it's a thing of beauty when we actually get the lights to work because workers keep unplugging them. But um, in order to celebrate the artists and thank them for letting us hang their paintings in, our, in the windows, we said, let's have a, uh, a reception for them. And we went to, back to Mike Kluchin and said, hey, do you think we could do something to, to celebrate them? Absolutely, no problem. What do you want to do? Well, we just wanted to have a reception. They said, well, we'll have um, uh, wine and beer and appetizers, and well, let's really do this right. And that morphed from that one reception into now we are officially art start for the art walk um, community or a program. And in fact, tomorrow night, I invite you all to our next art walk. We've got three wonderful artists uh, displaying their art tomorrow. And all along, every single time we've asked for anything, there has been, never has been a, a question. We, we made a misstart. Uh, uh, we did um, on the easels. We realized it didn't work. Mike said, get, get good ones. Just go and get good ones. So that's what we did. And we now have fabulous working, um, working easels. My point here is that th the hotel is in wonderful, wonderful hands. I think anything you ask of them, they will do. I'm so pleased someone brought up the wood windows on the, on the ground floor because totally agree. That's what we see. And Christy and I keep saying all the time, oh my gosh, we have to get back in and clean because all this stuff is kind of dirty and whatever. They're not going to let that happen. They want this to be the queen of the coast back again. So whatever you ask of them, if there's any conditions, I will guarantee you, based on my experience, they are incredibly uh, forthcoming, willing to do anything that you want. And they, the other really important thing is that they want to be partners in the community. So to that extent, they're, they're here for the long run. They, they want this to be done right. And just a personal note, when I built my house, I insisted on having um, not wood windows because I knew what happens to wood windows at the beach. My next door neighbor has wood windows. That man is continually every single year painting them, resealing them, doing something. And I just look and laugh because my windows look beautiful. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know the difference. So um, just consider that. But please do realize you have a gem in this operator. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Christy Miller. So with two phone calls and sitting next to each other for two hours, we didn't discuss what we were going to say. And she basically said almost everything I was going to say with the, with a couple of exceptions. First of all, it's nice to see you all and I'm happy to be here not talking about Sweetwater for once. Um, I do want to tell you that for the better portion of the year, we've come to know this operator and we have the, uh, we've come to know, have the utmost respect for them as Michelle has talk, kind of talked to you through what's morphed into Art Walk and Art Start. I um, in addition to that, uh, they've been so supportive of nonprofits. They've given donations of up to $35,000 for special, special organizations. They've opened up the property at no cost to allow um, nonprofits to meet there or have an event there. And they've just been so kind and generous. Uh, based on our experience, I would absolutely say that you do have a wonderful um, organization here and they will move forward to do what's best. They really do care about the hotel. And on top of all of that, she stole my closing line, which was, I think the community does not like to call her the grand old lady, Mike. They actually like to call her the queen of the coast. Let's restore her and bring her back to her former glory. Thank you. You can't say restore.
Get in big trouble, George. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd like to make the case for, for the wood, wood windows as well. I have a historic house built in 1933, and not like what everybody is describing, the windows in my house are the original windows, and they are still just fine, and they work with uh, ropes and weights, and they go up and down, and they work great, and I'm not spending every waking moment maintaining them. They get painted along with the rest of the house. And when we had to add some more windows, we had them duplicated. And they look just the same as the others. And they work just the same as the others. And they're fine. So if a window can last from 1933 until now, it's at 90 years, I think that's pretty darn good. And so I suggest that we do that. I'm concerned about those. I mean, not the least of which is the color. Nowhere in any of the postcards do we have a dark brown window. That's going to be a horrible touch on this whole scene. It's not going to look historic. And that's not addressing the material and all the other issues that, that you're confronting. I'd like to argue for the plain awnings. Some of those early postcards had teal. Other ones had kind of a rusty red. I, I find both of those options preferable to the stripes, which seem very distracting and kind of circus tent-like. So I'm glad to hear that they're willing to reconsider that. I appreciate how far we finally come. So many times we, we were confronting um, things happening without permits and conditions asking for a master plan, which were never um, granted. And so it's, it's nice that we're making progress on this now. And I hope that um, your, the line of questioning that you've had is, is wonderful. And I hope that we can get all these de details pinned down and that you will, we will get an opportunity to watch how this is going over time. And hopefully every time we look at it, it'll be even better. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chair. Um, my name is Jordan Sisson. I would request maybe five minutes, um, if that's possible, uh, or as quickly as possible. Try to get under five try minutes. Try to keep it to four. So thank you so much. much. Super appreciated. My name is Jordan Sisson. I represent Unite Here Local 11, who includes thousands of members in Orange County, including um, Inez Guzman, Diana Nufo, and city resident Blair McManus, a resident of this city. Um, as you all received a comment letter earlier today, um, that should be before you in hard copies. Um, as noted in there in our attachment A, we submitted comments to the Heritage Commission uh, regarding some of the concerns of this project that unfortunately we don't believe was addressed in the staff report, which I want to try to very quickly go through, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, first, regarding the CDP exemption. Um, first, the CDP exemption seems to be prematurely filed. Um, the code section that was referenced in the staff report specifically subsection 012A, does not mandate issuing a CDP exemption. Um, it seemed as though that it was a little premature because there was a there was a public hearing, this public hearing that was supposed to happen. Um, so again, the you needed a full record. That full record includes this public meeting, and you can't do that unless you have the public meeting. Uh, curiously, if you look at the last Planning Commission meeting for January 4th, 2023, they claimed it was exempt, but they did not issue a CDB exemption before that public hearing, or at least one was not referenced in the staff report on the city agenda. So it seems a little weird. Uh, we would request that clarity on this issue. Um, additionally, just to clarify what staff suggested, that this is just what happened last time. It wasn't. Again, the last time this was at this body, there was no CDB exemption included in the staff report. Additionally, for that, that coastal appeal you heard about, 
um, the applicant sought an exemption, but then withdrew it. Um, that's not the case here. There is no word of that exemption being um, withdrawn. So this is very different. My second point is regarding what I think, first of all, I want to say great questions. Obviously, I'm very mindful about project piecemealing. As you see from Exhibit B, there's an excerpt from the Coastal Commission substantial issue of a hearing in 2021. The, one of the key concerns was whether or not the cumulative projects at this hotel site would be considered a major redevelopment. Since then, you've heard ample evidence of multiple submittals and applications being previously suggested, being contemplated right now, and forthcoming. That is substantial evidence. I would direct your attention to pages uh, two through seven of the staff report, which identifies all the past and uh, anticipated future uh, submittals. Um, specifically, page six and seven includes a structural work that was submitted for in December of last year for 68 rooms. Also, the future signage, which was expressed, as well as a future re-roofing. Now, this is all substantial evidence in the staff report. This is clearly something that the, the applicant has refused to apply with this same submittal. Um, as you heard earlier today, again, the expediter is very talented, very likable, much more than I, but you know, you heard it very clear. We have, they have an intention to do more submittals, but they're trying to avoid coastal. And again, this was the issue that the Coastal Commission identified, was piecemealing all the different projects. They referenced that this does not trigger the major redevelopment by citing to a, a, a sheet plan. It's not including the staff report. Moreover, it, that, I doubt it addresses the cumulative projects to date, as well as what's happened since the Coastal Commission substantial evidence hearing in 2021, and what's now being proposed before you, as well as these future promise discussions. Um, in the limited time I have, um, I would like to say that this does raise issues about coastal compliance, including land use element policy 6.2 um, regarding low cost overnight Hi. accommodations. And lastly, I would Hi. say um, in the remaining time, I would lastly request that you continue this item with all the projects considered, all their plans for this entire project considered all together. That may include a CDP. That is what uh, we respectfully request. Thank you so much for your time and indulgence. Thank you. I believe the commissioner has a question for you. Yeah, can you explain the sort of what seems on the surface a, a contradiction between all the points you bring up seem to want to delay and stall this project and keep it from moving forward when in fact you represent workers in the hotel industry where the opening of this project would create you know, hundreds of jobs for the people that are part of the union you represent. Can you explain that contradiction? I appreciate the question. Um, that being said, I would first preface that um, unions have standing to allege uh, not only CEQA issues, but coastal development issues, land use policies. And so that is um, my client's interest here is compliance with the coastal development permit requirements, the Coastal Act and the land use plans subject here. Two, in terms of delay, you know, it's interesting because you heard today that you're being asked not to consider all these other proposals, only what they have proposed. Now, I believe, and I understand from the staff report that this is under new ownership, which is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is since 2021, the Coastal Commission said, hey, you need to look at all these projects, past, current, and future, and consider them successively, all cumulative projects. Now, that's been 2021. Nothing has prevented them from doing that hard work. Nothing has prevented them from doing that lifting and submitting an application that considers all the projects and all the promises and open questions that you heard. The okay, I think you've answered. I think you've answered my question. Thank you. Any question? Any further questions, Mr. Commissioner? Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, and knowing that there's nobody online, uh, we'll close. Uh, the public hearing at this point. Um, are there any additional commissioner questions for staff or the applicants at this point? I have one. Okay. <laughs> um, getting to the color of the window, if you know, if it uh, if the fiberglass is approved going forward, 
Um, is there any alternative coloration to the exterior of the window that could be uh, done? In other words, could it could you do something that would match the uh, gray trim color of the building so that these aren't uh, you know kind of creating a dark frame around the window? And by the way, boat paint doesn't work on wood. It's gel coat. It's a completely different thing. So this particular window that we're looking at today offers six different variations of exterior color. One is including a dark gray color. And then there's another one. I think that's a darker hue of that gray that's gunmetal, which is gray, but lighter than the bronze. So uh, if if you were to go to the company with a, a color swatch of the the gray of the exterior of the building, they wouldn't be able to do that for you? They wouldn't be able to color match whatever you give them offhand. There's would a, would you be able to? It would I? I would like Not to. Not personally, but I mean, <laughs> would somebody be able to do that? To be able to color match a specific yeah. paint? Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd have to do further investigation if okay. this the company that we're looking at would be able to. Do you have the samples, the uh, five or six colors that are available with you? Not with me okay. today, no. Oh, um, yeah, we could pull them up online pretty easily. Just to follow up on that uh, with staff, Martina, do you remember that there was, as part of the historic analysis, there was, you know, a paint color analysis where they did chipping and cratering and tried to figure out, you know, what the various colors of, I know the walls were uh, throughout the history of the building. Did they do the same for, for the, the windows themselves? Do you know? I'm not sure. I think that would be a good question for the historic consultant. Um, okay. I, I, would, I would, you know, I've been, I was sitting here for quite a while looking at every single postcard and blowing it up and looking at the windows and it's all over the place. I mean, there clearly was a point of time it, on, on, where you can blow it up and see it where the windows were dark and the center divider was also dark. And it almost, it, it was, I thought it was one of the more attractive versions because what it did is it unified the double window instead of creating two separate windows next to each other. But there are other images on the postcards where they're kind of a lighter color, like a gray color. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I you know, think, I think one it, of the struggles is, is as there are not a lot of those remaining windows, there's not a lot of sample to to investigate. Um, but but I would note the whole, the, the, the heritage committee did not object to the color. Is that correct? There wasn't an objection to the color in the recommendation. It was primarily the material. Did, did you, did you have anything to weigh in on that regardless regarding whether the, the windows themselves were analyzed for their historic colors? Yes, we did cratering on the, on one of the two windows at the tower. Um, that are original wood windows. Those are the two percent um, uh, that exist, and um, a range of color was found, including a, a green color. Um, and I would just um, direct your attention to the two first historic photographs. If the goal, which it appears to be, is to achieve, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> Vanna. Um, uh, this is one of the earliest photographs. Um, in the reports, and it really shows a dark window, um, whether that was green or another. Yeah, with a black and white photo, it's kind color. of hard to tell the colors. But it's it's dark. Um, and again, we found a range of color, and it's in one of our reports. Okay. And it's not. it doesn't appear to be the same color as the trim, the parapet trim. Okay. Um, are there any other questions at this point? Do you mind if I we say a couple words about the windows because it's been such a topic of conversation? Uh, we'll keep it brief. Sure. So I, you know, I've I've heard some comments and and I, I do want to point out that the windows were wood in 1930 and they were that that way for I think 20 to 30 years. Um, we are not replacing wood windows. We are repa replacing non-historic steel and aluminum windows with a proposal of fiberglass windows. Um, if the wood windows were still there, we would be probably keeping them there. Um, but they're not, and we've done our best to match, um, the best we could with all the historic review, the look, the shape, the width, the, the height, the feel, 
what we think is most practical for this environment, for the ability to clean, to maintain, and to operate a functioning uh, <laughs> hospitality building. And it's a lot different than a single family home. It's a large commercial building with a lot of windows on the ocean in a significant climate that um, we've taken all those into consideration. And we, we believe the windows we proposed um, adequately, adequately address the concerns um, that, that, are, that are there. Understood. And, you know, we, we've heard that. <laughs> Believe me. So. Uh, May I add on to that? Really? I mean, really, you guys have made your point at this point. I mean, it's really, uh, uh, w okay. there's nothing, I, I'm not hearing anything new, put it that way. So I have the six colors. Yeah, that's new. Okay. Six colors. <laughs> So these are, are these are these are different options. Which color are you are you? So we are using. This That's one, the one the I. Broad. The one I pointed to, yeah. But it is available, say, in that that lighter greenish grayish too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the window is available in multiple colors. Um, okay, I will uh, reclose the public hearing and. Um, I guess we will, I'll briefly uh, stall for time now yeah. that one of our commissioners have left. Okay, I will, can, can, is it appropriate time to take a temporary break right now? Um, yes, I would, but I would caution all commissioners, don't speak to each other, particularly not about this item, and actually it's just safe not to speak to each other at all until we come back. So noted. All right, we will take a five-minute, less than a yeah, about five-minute break, and we'll try to uh, come back here at... Uh, 825.
we left it as we were just about to begin with our commissioner deliberation, discussion, and comments. Is there anybody in particular who would like to begin? <laughs> okay, I will. Okay. Since nobody else volunteered. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments and then a, and then a little bit lengthier one. But um, uh, first of all, um, to address uh, Anne's comment about her home windows being functional and wood, a uh, commercial building is a, a really different use. And hotel guests, although most of them are reasonable and nice people, can certainly get out of hand at times and and uh, cause some damage. Which you know, uh, uh, you know, especially in a weighted wood window, those things uh, you know can jam up at times. Uh, and especially if they're not carefully being uh, operated, it could be a problem. So. As far as uh, uh, painting wood with gel coat, which is a boat paint, uh, that just doesn't work at all. It won't. It won't. It won't last. Um, uh, my comment about the awning: uh, I'm not a big fan of the candy stripe awnings. Uh, you know, my preference would be to see that it be a solid color, like in some of the historic uh, postcard photographs. Um, but I want to make this comment since I spent time trying to write it down. <clears throat> there is a big difference between restoration and renovation. An example, in this is a, kind of a metaphor, an example is a restoration of a classic car to, to gain a hundred point restoration, a classic car with a classic car. Every part must be restored to its absolute original condition. That's every bolt nut down to the wiring and everything else. On the other hand, a classic car could have the outward appearance of an all original vehicle, but could have new components and drivetrains that are not original, but bring the functionality of the vehicle up to a more modern and drivable standard. Since the Hotel Laguna is a, is a renovation due to the fact that it has been modified many, many times over its history, the goal is to have it appear as it was back in the 1930s glory days but with a functionality associated with contemporary and long lasting materials, uh, the renovation concept that does meet the secretary of the interior standards for this type of upgrade. There is a balance between property rights and forward motion. Uh, we need to, we need our landmark property brought back to life. We have to accept the idea that compromises where we are and move forward. Um, so I think with some of the, um, uh, some of my, uh, questions I asked earlier about, um, you know, the, 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 uh, archway at the beach end of the North elevation, um, uh, the comments on the fire, fire escape and the, uh, color of the, uh, awnings, um, and some of the other issues, um, if they're addressed and or conditioned tonight, uh, I would be able to move forward. Thank you, Commissioner Whiten. Yeah, I, I have two categories of comments. One is the windows, and two is the detailing. On the windows, I think it was very well put by Commissioner Dubin that uh, compromise, uh, I think, is, is a reasonable approach in this situation. Um, we've hashed over the wood versus the fiberglass, We've looked at different manufacturers of the windows to really search to see if we could find a fully wood window that would meet the specifications of this commercial building project, which is a hotel and which needs to be maintained. And the windows need to be maintained regularly on a regular basis, so every week or two weeks or however often. And and more than that, when when it's raining and stormy, so to maintain the windows, what do you have to do? You have to. You, one thing is you have to keep the frame and the window materials um, in good condition, but you also need to clean the windows. How are you going to clean the wood window, which does not have a product available that allows cleaning from the interior? What you have to do is either erect scaffolding around the building, which requires a permit every time you want to clean the windows, or you have to um, 
uh, install anchors and davits on the roof and then hang scaffolding and bosun chair over the over the bill. Never seen this in Laguna Beach. <laughs> no, just it isn't the way things roll here. So I think compromise is probably the order of the day. And I think what that requires is a very rigorous uh, renovation of the windows and not just the windows at the ground level whereby all the materials are real materials as historic historically real materials um, and right and and that the renovation of of the windows is authentic is a is authentic um the compromise would be that on the second and third floors where you can't touch them and those with very very practiced eyes and professionals could probably pick out that these were fiberglass windows but at a distance to most people you would not be able to most people would not know uh, that these were not wood windows now having said that i would request that we have a final sample of the full assembly with the center mullion and the two framing window pieces um and and, and that that be approved um before anything goes ahead um the color i you know i guess we can make a discussion about the color but it, it appears that the dark co this color is probably acceptable now, on the detailing, which is my second category of comments, this building is is a rectangle um, that's dressed up in three major locations. One, we have the cupola, which we haven't talked a whole lot about, but um, uh, which has a lot of detail on it. And you might say, well, why is that important that the cupola, which is way up and away from the street, why is that important? Because... It's a skyline silhouette building downtown. In the downtown, er, that area of the downtown is the tallest building and it's visible throughout that area. So that profile is 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 beautiful and important and it creates yeah, a landmark downtown. It's a it's a beacon downtown. Um it's also seen from up in the hills looking down. You see the silhouette of of the cupola with the vein. Um, so I recommend that we we restore the detailing on the cupola and the other other uh, two facade areas are the east facade, the panel that runs from the street level, flanking the door all the way up to the roof parapet in the and the cornice there, um, and then the I, the little guga that's on the top. I don't know what the architectural term is for that. Guga. It's a it's a guga. It's a guga. But it, the one that's shown in the renderings is does not replicate the historic, you know, and I'll say something about that in a minute. So that entire panel would be restored along with the shield that's in the postcard. We've discussed all this. Second area is the northeast corner, which we've already really, you know, prattled on about quite a bit. And we'd like to see that fully restored, including the corner Point, I guess that is right where the north and east elevations come together, just as it's shown in that historic photograph that everyone goes back to. I would like to see the the planters removed so that it replicates that original photograph. Um, and then the the plaster, the fireplace, the fire escape plaster renovated. And I would like to see the balcony, the Romeo and Juliet balcony added back. And then there's a second balcony detail on the third floor. I'd like to see that all added back. I, uh, you know, re the service area and the northwest corner down by the beach and the two arched, arched um, windows. Um, I would like to condition the project so that it comes back uh, so that we don't get into any kind of piecemealing question um but uh really this is just a glorified very plain building um and uh, the detail is 
is everything. Um, it's, you know, this, you know, I think we're, we're, everyone's um, encouraged by the submittal, but if I had to approve what I'm looking at in terms of these, these elevations, I couldn't approve the project. It's too vanilla. There isn't enough detail that's been shown now, notwithstanding the fact that this is just the first blush and the, it's a concept. This is all we're going to see officially, you know. This is the only official submittal that comes before the Planning Commission. And it does make me nervous, frankly. I want us to have a whole list of, of details that we should condition this project to, to this project. Uh, because, as I said, I wouldn't approve it if I had to just approve those elevations. I, would, I need to condition it so there's all this detailing is approved. And I don't want to be meddlesome, excessive, and I certainly don't want to hold up the project. But on the other hand, this is one of our great icons, you know. It's important that we get it right. And, you know, I, um, so I don't think there's any harm in kind of being a little, ex little excessive. Thank you. Uh, which I can go. Go. I've got six, six of them, um, and and there's a little bit, a little bit of overlap from what we heard. But I, 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 I just want to state that I agree and disagree with the, uh, the historic uh, architecture consultant in that I, I understand we understood the difference between restoration and rehabilitation, and I'm sure his definition of rehabilitation is very accurate, and that 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 is kind of the minimum criteria that needs to be achieved here. But, you know, crappy windows, we can replace them, you know, in, anything better than a crappy window is an improvement. So maybe that's okay. I, but I, I don't really think in, in this community, that's going to be good enough, you know, that we do have the discretionary ability to ask for something better than the lowest level of rehabilitation. And, and I think you're hearing some of that and we, and we're going to do that without any hesitancy. Now, having said that, <laughs> I agree with the, the the discussion we're hearing on the windows. You know, I think one one of the things I was educated to tonight that didn't come back and resonate, and I really wanted to ask a couple of the speakers representing the Heritage Committee, even though they were representing themselves, is I don't know that you could have it both ways. I don't know that you could have the very carefully tuned, narrow uh, uh, sides of the windows to maximize view out and to best replicate the historic dimensions of the windows and have wood windows because the sides are, I've never, you know, I've seen a lot of wood windows and they are bulkier, they are heavier, they have to be for a structural, you know, standpoint because of the type of wood and everything we heard. So I, I, it would have been in, interesting to hear somebody sort of, would you make that trade off? You know, would you make that trade off of losing the proportion of the windows in order to have have wood. I was. I, I would. I'd rather stick with the proportion of the window, uh, especially given the fact that the distances are such that it's going to be hard to tell a difference. I think that that where we can make up for that trade-off is on the ground floor, and I and I think uh, George mentioned an all wood, you know, uh, treatment. And I I would I would um, I think we also heard a metal treatment, but I would vote for an all wood treatment. To me, this is the place or you have the greatest tactile, close, intimate relationship. I think you want the retail to look like quality retail. We want the retail to look like quality retail in this town. And when you go to any sort of high, higher end, you know, shopping environment, you see that's the one place where they don't hold back, you know, is in the materials and the treatment and the detail and the thickness and the richness of the, of, of the treatments and the doors and windows at that ground floor level. So I feel very strongly that we should, and I think everybody does. Um, the, um, the back corner, you know, I think is unresolved. And I think it's, it's a weak part of your present, of your proposition. There's been very little attention given to it. It's a, it's a seedy, you know, look, you know, condition. Uh, and I would, if there is going to be, a uh, an opportunity to come back with some refinement, <clears throat> uh, I, that would be something that that I would like to see addressed. Uh, get, you know, you, you're really good designers. Come up with something. 
you know, help us make that uh, something we'd be proud of instead of embarrassed of, uh, even though it does under, not standing all the functional, you know, uh, criteria. Um, the, uh, I, we mentioned it quickly, but I just wanted to go on the record that I think we should, we should have public art in that upper space, you know, in the center of the building facing PCH. I don't care if it's the medallion. I think it should, I think to me, it's a very, it could be a very interesting art project. Um, and, and, but it should be something that, that, that creates some color and a focus. Cause that was, that was, that was the original intention. I mean, it was, you know, and I don't know why they painted it off. At, at, at some point. And my last point, and I'm kind of the only one, but I, I think, you know, if, if and I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't make this a condition, I would make this a request. I would condition that you consider, I don't even know if that's, <laughs> that that on their cafe, you know, that you'd see if you could get some operable windows so that, you know, it, it's it's lively and you hear noise and you hear music and you see people and it, and it really, versus a, a solid, you know, uh, window that you know nobody knows what's going on back there and it's kind of dead you know so uh those are my my six items but you know given those i would be supportive of the project thank you commissioner goldman okay um, by the way activating the corner agree with you 100 percent um we talked about that when we met so i, I i'll give my my um my functional the, the technical response and then a, a couple of general comments um I agree on the cupola. Uh, it, it should have some detail, and I think we should condition that. Um, I agreed with George on the awning colors. Um, someone said it may have been George Circus. Uh, I, I I think a single color would be more elegant. Um, on the windows, I understand that there's a trade-off. I understand that that wood could be more appropriately historically appropriate, um, but I think the trade-off of getting more functional, um, better lasting commercial windows, um, hadn't even considered the viewpoint that you brought up tonight, um, Laura. Um, I'm okay at the second level up uh, on the windows. I agree. I think it's a general sentiment that the things that you can feel and touch on the lower level, that should be wood and it should be more detailed. Um, and so here here comes my, my general comment. Um, and I asked the question, um, about what's the thinking of the interiors, um, not to really critique design. Um, Susan said it very well. We only get to see this once, and we're commenting on just the exterior of the hotel, and we're trying to make the exterior of the hotel consistent with you know, the, the importance of the building, um, the first impression when you walk in the city, the significance. I'm equally concerned that it's a good hotel. And I, I can walk into a hotel and I can feel if it's a good hotel. I may not like the design, I may not like the art, but it's whether the hotel is harmonious, whether it has a soul, whether it's put together and you know you walk through the public space and it matches the exterior and feel. Um, and, and I think, candidly, you missed an opportunity here. Um, and we spoke about this. Um, you know, this 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 hotel has had a lot of controversy. Um, you, you know, the public doesn't own this hotel, but the residents here are invested in this hotel, and it's important for the city. You know, I I wasn't here when the montage was done, um, but it seems very clear to me the montage changed the complexion of the city here, because it was such a quality, iconic building. It was done so well the public space that was incorporated on the interiors and the outteriors, exteriors. And I don't know how, because I want to approve this as well. I want to keep this going. Um, where I struggle is we approve this. We'll put what the contingencies are um, that, that you need to do. Um, and my fear is who's monitoring it? Who's looking at this? to make sure that it is a good hotel and to make sure that, you know, your intentions to do the right things, which I sincerely believe um, the, the ownership and the consultants, the intention is to make this right on the things that we talked about. M my concern is how we maximize. And, and, you know, the activation of the corner is a perfect example. That corner could be the single most important corner in the city. 
Um, and, you know, my personal view is the planter shouldn't be there. It should be opened up. I understand, you know, that it may have been blocking and, and the, the uh, allowing for the, for the doors to open. But I agree with what Steve said. If we could open that up, activate it, really invite people in and just a, a feeling of that. And I don't know how us going forward as a body um, are going to have any any input um I, and I don't know what body it is in the city that's going to go through these plans in great detail and we're going to res it, the result is going to be a great hotel because this should be a great hotel. A great hotel isn't necessarily a luxury hotel. A great hotel is people will ride by it and say, wow, and they will walk by, walk in and not be disappointed. Um, you know, that it's not all tied together. So you know, I, I think we should be as specific as possible with the things that are within our control. I'd also like, and uh, Susan happened to be, which is a legal pat, which is legal Patrick. It was just the two of us happened to be at the meeting at the, at the same time, and we talked about monitors. Um, and I don't know, and and I don't think it necessarily has to come to planning commission for approval. But I would like to see some kind of a monitoring of this on a public basis. Um, so there can be input from the public. You know, you may not be held to it, but I think, again, the public doesn't own this hotel. The public isn't in spending their dollars on this hotel, but the public is vested in this hotel. And so, you, you know, to me, I, I'm fine, and I agree with all the comments that my fellow commissioners have made, and I think we should do some detail. I would just like to express some kind of a, a desire that that we have some kind of way to make sure that two years from now, whenever a year or two years from now, whenever this opens, we don't go to a grand opening and all walk out and say that was a yawn and we missed an opportunity here. Um, because look, more than anybody, because I do this, I recognize how expensive things are. And I recognize there's a lot of things that you do that are not gonna imp improve your rate, but they should be done. Um, so that's my, my my general comment. And and I guess, Susan, I don't know, you know, or George, you, you, know, you talked about some technical things. I do agree that we should make some conditions um, and specific ones. Can I ask a question? Um, is there any way to address what we're concerned about, which is ongoing review, frankly? And so for the any any condition of approval that the planning commission feels is appropriate for the project as applied, of course, we we you know. Planning, I'm sure, does plan check. If if there's a fear that, hey, we want to increase that somewhat and we want an on-site monitor, not every day, but for, for some things, or we want you know the applicant to come back and provide a report, not an actionable report, but a report, that's entirely fine. Making the can making interior conditions based off of the 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 application for what's before you tonight, which is on the exterior, um is is going to be a challenge. There's not really a nexus there to say you would like to you know do all the things that you want to do here, but down the road, if you redo the interior, city wants to have a a a, a monitor in there. I'm not sure what that process is for the interior. If they're, you know, to my experience, no. There, there's there, when when someone shows up and says, hey, I want to you know redo a floor or do something like that. Typically, cities do not have someone in there going. No, that doesn't look right. You got to come back, and 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 so yeah, that would be that would be quite the quite the challenge. Um, once again, that's just based off of kind of the fundamental premise that the conditions for which we impose have to be related to the project before you and, and the impacts for which the the planning commission feels that, that that there could be based off of the project before you. Um, that you're addressing the interiors. You're addressing you're addressing the interiors. And, and, and I apologize, Commissioner Goldman. Yeah, was it, that it, was that your inquiry? It, 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 it isn't it isn't the interiors whether you paint the walls green or red. Um it, it's it's the planning of the building, the layout of the public space, um, the incorporating the retail. I mean, you, you know, my concern on retail is you're gonna get some retail tenants in and it's not gonna be consistent with what we're talking about here. Um it's it's you know, it's it's the building itself and how it's laid out and planned. Not necessarily whether there's a couch versus two chairs or, you know, what, what, I mean, I, I think you understand what I'm saying, just that it, that it, that it works. <clears throat> right, so so my answer is that 
currently right now with the project before you, I would advise against that only because there's not really, as I said before, from what I can, from what I can tell, a, a nexus between, hey, you are proposing X, Y, and Z, and we think there could be A, B, and C impacts. Therefore, we're going to do, you know, the conditions are, are, are D, E, and F. And so now, once again, due to the well, may, may, yeah. may, maybe in the way I was saying it again, I and I, I and and what I said was I'm not looking for us to approve what they're doing. What I'm looking for is just some greater visibility along the way. Um, and you know, the, one of the questions is is could we make a condi condition that at various points they just come and present? So uh, without you, you know, and and so it gives the public it, at least it gives. It, it, it gives us and the public, if there are some very big concerns, um, they can be expressed and we, you know, they will do what they will do. Um, right. So it, as long as the, the understanding is that any type of presentation by the applicant truly is informational only, and there is no binding nature to that. So you're right. If they show up and, you know, all five of you are going, that's terrible. And then the, the community shows up and says, man, we really, we really don't like this. I want to be clear that there's not going to be a mechanism for the planning commission to, to no, but we live it. in the real world. Of course you're right. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. And so we live in the real world. And if they are coming and doing something terrible and they realize they're going to alienate the entire town, they're going to fix it. Yeah. It's likely. Sure. And, and so, so, so yes, I have, I have seen certain applications you know, where there is a, you know, hey, come back and 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 just kind of update us. Um, and so I will, you know, maybe have to defer to, to Mr. Contreras here. I, I'm not sure if that's been the, the practice in, in, in history in the city. From a purely legal standpoint, I don't I don't view it as as legally prohibited, but that's a very, very low baseline in terms of I'm only going to step yeah, in and, if it's and, illegal. And 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 David, before you answer, there really isn't precedent for something like this. We only have one hotel Laguna. This is only going to be done once, at least in all of our lifetimes um, I'm here. Um, so I'm not really concerned with precedent. Um, what, what I'm concerned with is um, this going forward, that it's not going forward in the dark. And, you know, one day we all walk into an opening and say, wow, an opportunity was missed. Um, and yeah, look, you have a lot of people who, 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 who opine, and I do this on many things that I'm not qualified to do. So there is the risk that you know, there's gonna be a lot of people that are just gonna to wanna to talk and have an opinion. But I think through that, if there is more of a public process here and there is more involvement you know, from this body and the, the, the people who are concerned and watching this hotel over the years, some good will come out of it um, and might prevent, you know, might prevent the, the, the ownership from doing something that just mm -hmm. is disastrous for the city. You know, not not saying that, you know, you're not skilled and don't have good intentions and all. Um, but I do think that there is a level of public comment and comment from us that, that could be helpful. Now, I, I don't know what the rest of you think. You, you yeah. know. Um, and then the exterior. This is our one opportunity to make the comments on the exterior as well. Um, is there a place for an ad hoc committee? So in, and 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 I apologize. So in terms of, so there's, you know, if if the will of the of the commission is, you know, potentially, hey, you've heard all of our comments, you know, potentially come back, um, that th then yes, there is some potential optionality there. If it's the if it's the will of the commission that we are going to approve something with certain conditions, it's very very I would advise against. It's very very difficult to then reach back down and start and start changing those and. You know, you, you, you never really want to have a condition in there for, you know, something, you know, if this, then that happens. It's, it's really just, you know, you, you're right. You get one shot at it, condition the project the best you can. And that's what the, and that's what the applicant and property owner has to work with. So I'm not really, you know, I probably didn't answer your question directly, but it really depends on, on, on what route that the, that the planning commission wants. To so, so, so just to, for clarification, that, that we could do a condition that there are a certain, a handful of things. So we're basically approving the project. It's allowing them to keep going, but there's some. Uh, uh, there could be a handful of things that they could, would come back, and we would be able to. 
further review or not? Sure. I mean, here here would be my suggestion. Well, oh, well no, I, can you let him answer the question? Well, of course, it, I mean, it, but I can answer for you. Yes, <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> but the question: Do we want to do that here? No, no. I'm not asking if we. I, I just want to understand: Can we condition certain things, like the details on the cupola, in a manner that they can still move ahead with the project, and then that particular thing would come back for a further review and final approval on that specific thing? The answer is yes. You can condition the project accordingly. So but the condition has to be very specific right. on the item and the request of the applicant. Okay. Would the would the if there was an ad hoc committee or a subcommittee or something, could it be tasked with simply ensuring that if we do add conditions of approval tonight, that those are actually being met? And well, go ahead. Well, so typically that's, that's, you know, usually that's directed towards, towards staff in terms of, you know, that the quality of the finish is such that to the satisfaction of the, of the, of the, of, of the director. And, and that's typically how it's done. Um, the creation of an, of an ad hoc committee to, to, to sign off on that, um, is something you unique. Um, and so, you know, we we would probably want to look into that a bit more, only because there's there could be potentially Brown Act issues and 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 stuff like that that we want to make sure we're not we're not stepping on. I mean, what if what if what if the conditions were were articulated that they'd be the, the final approval would be by staff, but there'd be a two member ad hoc committee of the planning commission that could advise staff. I would probably use the word consult with staff, but but sure, yes. Can, can I say so, so there's been a, a couple of things put on the table that we're discussing about um, like the recommendation from the Heritage Committee to have a historic monitor. So um, the commission hasn't talked at all about potentially applying that condition or not and what would that would entail. And also I think what's maybe difficult about this conversation right now is it's hard to know exactly how to achieve which items and what concerns you have. So if, for instance, your concern is um, it's just conditioned to restore the cupola tower, but there's not any specific conditions or any um, parameters to stay away from. So you only want to use specific materials or those things I think would be what we'd be looking for. That's a little bit more um, direct. So then either a historic monitor staff or um, the architect can implement it as easily as possible. So I think maybe it would be a good idea to, to carve out which specific topics we're concerned about and we can address how to condition each topic appropriately because I think broadly it's it's getting a little bit hard to nail down something but, that but, fits but, but, I, but I think we know what those are. I think we can do that. I've made a list. Ch yeah. Chair, if I may, just a point of clarity. Um, the item before you is the project. It's not for the creation of an ad hoc committee. If you were to go down that path of discussion, we would have to come back at a future agenda with an agenda item for the creation of an ad hoc committee for this specific project. Okay. Well, here, I, one, I haven't even had a chance to make any comments yet. So that's what I wanted to do. And I want to offer suggestions the way I see it. One, I was going to, you know, go through my particular comments about the project. And then we circle back around and that we ag agree on what actually we're talking about in terms of conditions. And depending on the number of those conditions and, and the type of those conditions and, you know, wh what exactly we're talking about, then I would say our options are either there's enough of those conditions of enough detail and specificity about it that that we say I you know I'm uncomfortable with approving this project tonight with this many conditions of approval and we say we're we're not going to approve it tonight and we'd like to have them come back right we have that option and for this particular project as a number of you, my fellow commissioners have said you know we're, we only get one shot really at getting this thing right so if we if we have enough of those conditions that we don't feel comfortable of approving it tonight with a whole list of additional conditions, ask the applicant to take all of this stuff under advisement and come back and and e either revise their plans to show all those conditions have now been uh, addressed and added to the plans and co or come back and say, we did 90% of what you asked for and here's the reasons why we didn't these other 
and make another case and come back to us. Those I think to see are reasonable options. You know, I don't think we need to create uh, an ad hoc committee. I don't think we need to, you know, while we all want this project to be successful and 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 great and everything, you know, the and with all due respect to what you're saying about the interior and all that, that's not part. I know it's not. I know it's I know at it's all of what we're being asked to consider I, here tonight. I, I, I know, and, and it's really a leap for us to, you know, it's I, like. I know. As a, as a former member of the design review board, you know, and going through the process of, of getting a house approved in this community and having to go through the design review process is is arduous and as it is and, and time and, a, you know, and that's all about the exterior appearance of a house. And imagine somebody saying, you know, we're, we want to start getting involved in your interior of your I, home. Again, now. it's, it's not what I said. Uh, it, it is not, and I, I specifically said it twice, and I specifically responded to Patrick. I, we don't want to comment red, green. We don't want to comment couches and chairs. We just want to look at how things are being laid out, what's being done with the retail, how it may impact impact the exterior. What are they doing with regard to the corner from a planning but standpoint? To what, to what purpose? Uh, to, to if the, we have no authority to really uh, make I, any... You know, we could sit there and make comments, and I don't. You know, I don't. But I don't people, like the interior people, space that you people played. People come out to here. us, Ken. I forget what it's called when people come to us in advance and just concept, concept review. review. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, and I'm and we're not talking about hours here, um, and we're not talking about every phase. We pick a few big milestones, and and they come and just say, "Here's here. It's a concept. It's concept review for the public spaces. Yeah, uh, for the public spaces. I, I don't. I don't know. It, I just, it's I, not. A, it's not a design review. Because everybody's got an opinion on design, it would be crazy, right? Okay, well, anyway, anyway, anyway back. You know, here, here's my my comments regarding the project, and I, and one of the benefits of being the chair is being able to go last, last word, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, for a number of reasons, and and one of which is is hearing, you know, all the t testimony from the applicants and members of the public, and all you yeah. fellow commissioners, and and taking that all in. You know, I, um, uh, you know, and and really the extent of what we're being asked to do here tonight is is not that great. You know, it's it's four four items. You know, we're talking about the exterior of the building, so you know, number one, replacement of the guest room windows. You know, but when we last met on this a year ago, you know, I uh, really felt as though we we wanted to pick that period of significance and we wanted to try to get the building to look as much as that period of significance as possible. Um, and so my comments back then is, uh, was I thought it was important that that the windows have at least the real look and feel of, of wood windows. Um, you know, I've come to be swayed by the comments of, of everybody else. And, and I, I did always understand there were these other issues regarding maintenance and cleaning and being in the oceanfront uh, environment. And so those are all valid points. Um, so I've, you know, come to, to the point where I um, agree that wood windows are probably not the best option for the upper level guest room windows and that i'm willing um to accept you know the what's being proposed here with possible exception of the color i think the dark bronze is is going to make them not look compatible with the rest of the building and and they're an important part of this building because as has been said the building doesn't otherwise have a lot of detail to it so um so that that's one issue so i'd i'd be willing to consider that um the you know we haven't talked about um the replacement of the fire egress areas and i i agree with what's being proposed uh on the plans for that right now and that you know the double hung window there at the fire escape is is not appropriate and i don't think is you know it's a safety issue and so that should be replaced with a door as being proposed um yeah i'm okay with the fire escapes you know being reconstructed and they have to meet current code standards i'm not um 
I don't feel uh, I'm not as concerned or feel it's that important to add that what was that that balcony thing that was underneath these um, north elevation uh, fire escape. I think one that 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 as was stated that that wouldn't work with the new proportions of that fire escape. It wouldn't work with I, I think the way the fire escape system is being proposed with, I believe it's a, a, a permanently affixed ladder on the exterior that, that would always be there. So um, that that doesn't seem as important to me. Uh, you know, repainting the building with the revised uh, uh, paint and trim colors that they've proposed, I, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, the, the, the type of paint that they're using for, uh, you know, for the stucco, I, um, you know, I'm willing to leave that to the experts uh, about what what's the most appropriate there. I think what's really um, needs some input from us all is what we're specifically asking for in terms of extra detail on um, the facades and and what's being proposed. I agree with with all the other recommendations of the Heritage Committee other than you know the wood windows and and I, and I do so reluctantly because I really would like to and I know that they spend a great deal of time discussing that and and struggling over it and they they came up with the decision that they felt that that you know that that wood windows were uh, uh you know uh, appropriate but I do feel so that on the first floor level that it's that that being so visible and relating to the pedestrian experience along there that that those should be um the all should be all redone you know in addition to the guest room windows even though that's not you know currently what's being proposed as part of this project i think it's important as part of the overall because we're talking about an overall exterior rehabilitation so i i think that that would be you know a reasonable sort of compromise on that whole issue. Um, you know, I, I would like them to figure out and consider what they're going to do with those sliding glass doors on the uh, uh, that opposite courtyard side. I mean, if, as long as we're going to be doing this other stuff, you know, they, they consider doing something there as well. The, the awnings, I agree um, that I prefer a, a solid rather than the striped. Well, you know, I would probably prefer the, the darker, you know, uh, rust color. For in, in entirety, I believe you know the Bodega Restaurant that's right across the street recently um, renovated their space, and I think they've got striped awnings outside uh, that restaurant now. So that'd be a little um, much having striped awnings on both sides of the street, right in front of each other. That what's happening with those other archways on the north elevation that are closest to the beach? Current, you know, currently they're 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 framed in. You can see that at one point there was, you know, there was windows there, and at one point there was awnings there. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put awnings there when there's not going to be any windows there. Uh, that that those areas are basically filled in now. But it would be nice if they're going to be doing um, this ad additional exterior trim uh, around the other arch arches to do to replicate that around those, you know. To, to leave the outline of the, the original arch that was there and then doing the additional trim around it. Um, the additional uh, details that we're talking about with adding back the um, emblem um, and any other little finials or whatever were up on the roof and on the, on the cup cupola, you know, I'm, a, I'm in agreement that th those should be um, added back where possible. Uh, you know, a little disappointed that that somehow the signs couldn't have been figured out and been wrapped in and made part of this project right now. Um, so it seems to me that you know the, there those are the little those are the details and stuff. And you know, are there enough of them where we feel comfortable, or do we are we you know a go through them all again together and see that we're all in agreement on them, and then 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 to make a decision, are we comfortable with conditionally approving this tonight with those items? Or do we feel as though there's enough of those items that we would rather continue this one more time and have them come back? You know, it, it, and I understand nobody wants to slow down the pro project, 
But at this point, after, you know, 10 plus years of this, this, you know, hotel being basically in its, its dilapidated state, I, I wouldn't mind continuing it for one more meeting to, to get it all right. I, I support that approach. I actually think that's the shortest time frame between moving forward. I mean, that way then we're eliminating, you know, because the idea then, because otherwise we're, we're like, you know, we're concerned about, oh, did, did they do everything that we told them to do? And or are we relying on or we staff, clear? Yeah. you know, to, to follow up on all that stuff? Or, yeah. you know. So we get fairly specific direction. On Very that. specific. Yeah. So I've got a... I've tried to make a list here of the of the of the detail points that we could either you know go through one by one and see if we're in agreement or or if you know sure yeah. why don't you go area by area you know okay well let's start with the the north facing elevation um the planter at the corner um i personally i think it should go because it's blocking it really blocks that whole you know you talk about activating that corner i think it's a detriment to that. Okay. Does getting rid of the planner uh, keep us from being able to have operable windows? Or even doors? <clears throat> we don't know that. We I, don't don't know that. I don't think we know that. Remo yeah. So that's, how does everybody feel about I, that? Yes. I heard a couple of people say, yeah, I'm okay with removing the planters. I agree. Okay. Um, the fire escape detail? You know, that's a really difficult detail because... I mean, there's standard. We haven't even seen the spec on the fire, what the fire escape looks like. Well, I think the main question there is, I mean, one, we, we're in agreement that we want we want that whole element to have the, the trim color paint, right? As is shown in, in yes. that one um, rendering, right? Everybody's yes. in agreement there. Yes. So, so which uh, there, I believe the applicant's already, you know, aware of and was planning on doing. I think the question was that 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 balcony thing that was underneath the frame of the mm -hmm. I, I don't I just don't think that that's that's going to work with the the uh, the fire escape as it's currently. Haven't seen a detail. We don't have a spec on the fire escape. We don't know. I mean, when oh. you look at this elevation here of that fire escape on the north elevation, it's pretty plain Jane. You just got the metal platforms right i'd like to ex just explore the possibility of whether anything could be added there and how so, does everybody else feel yeah. about that and so what we're talking about is in some of the older photographs right. there's actually a balcony that yeah. followed right. and well, it looks like it's part of the architecture of the building right, right. bring that back right. and somehow integrate that into the fire and then on the third so. floor there's an embellishment of some sort under the third floor it's platform the, uh, the I mean, it's all pretty clear in the historic photograph. Okay, so okay. explore the possibility of adding in the balcony at the fire escape. Okay, and then uh, the last thing on that side of the building is the the arched, you know, the arched moldings at the beach end of the. Well, if if, if they're if they're coming back, I would ask them. Yes, I would say specifically come up with a response, a, a, an articulation of the arches, but. But kind of look at that whole area, in in, in its entirety, and, and like what are what are three or four or five things that could be done, you know, it could be some uh, some modest public art could be added. It could be changing out completely the types of doors that are on the trash bin. It could be, you know, at maybe adding just a little bit of architecture to that mishmash of add-ons that are back there. Uh, it, it, general, it needs to be it needs to be designed. Yeah, yeah but in general, do do you feel? That's an important to at least have those moldings. And that would be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. That kind of covers that side of the building. Um, um, the corner, the corner where the north and the east elevation meet at the street level. Uh -huh. There's a, D, you know, a little, um, don't remember the name for that detail, but it's a corner treatment there. It's like a cornerstone yeah. kind of thing. It's arches springing. Okay, right so where the, where they're removing the planter? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, really, exactly right on the corner. Um, I think we're all in agreement on the wood moldings and doors on the ground level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about the? Um, they've indicated a, that port share awning in front of the front door. We haven't really talked about that. I, and that's why I'm yeah. bringing it up. Do you remember on the um, hotel? Um, 
which mountain hotel. Yeah, you know, there's. Yeah, I, I, look like, I look at like I like ten photos, and out of the ten photos, that That's that one. is on like two of them. But on this other hotel, they had proposed um, an awning over the sidewalk, and Caltrans didn't permit it. Which oh. which hotel is this? Um, the one that's across from the beverages on uh, beverage okay. store on the old Boom 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 Hotel. Oh. But but notwithstanding Caltrans, because that staff can research that. Is is do we have objections to the awning? Yes. Well, I know there used to be one. I can remember. No, it's in the photos. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, but I don't. I don't I know how it, either way. I don't feel strongly. Yeah, I, I, I kind of don't either. I I, I kind of like it myself. Okay. Uh, what about the balcony? What? So I, I don't know. My, my only suggestion to the applicant team would be that that they maybe do some additional research into whether or not that that would be allowed. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, not, not now. Um, that, you know, that you do a little research to make sure that the entry thing is allowed. And it sounds like if it, if it's allowed, then, then it's allowed and nobody has a problem with it. So that balcony, that little princess balcony on the, above the front door. Yes. I know you made a comment about that. Yeah. How does, how does everybody else feel? That's the little, the, the little. We're back to the fire escape now? No, we're this one. No, it was in front. I, I don't know. There's the applicant believes it's not allowed by code <clears throat> right and, and and so i'll just be clear for the applicant the, these direction and suggestion are not mandates if there are legitimate reasons i believe why right right they exactly. feel that these are not possible or legal the planning commission Sorry, is open to hearing those yeah, yeah they can when they go back they can right. make that case yeah i don't think it's a functional balcony it's just a it's a no it's an architectural I, yeah too bad yeah so in, investigate the possibility of adding in the the front entry balcony again and then we were all in favor of that shield. the arch or emblem or shield or whatever. Yes. And then what about the awning color? I think it's solid. 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 It sounds solid. like it's the okay. uh, window frame color, color. Excuse me, back there on that east elevation, the 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 Guga on the top. Okay. Is it, what's it called? We got the doodad balcony. The Guga. <laughs> finial, I guess it's a finial. I think it the well, little, think, yeah. Is that little thing on top called a finial? Yes. Yes. Uh, window frame color. Now that there's options. I, I, I mean, my feeling again is, is it, I just think it's too dark. And so then would it be better to have it match the trim color or as closely as possible or it be a different color altogether? Or what? Uh, what are your... I don't object to the dark. You know, I generally, like I've said, I don't come from colors. <laughs> I don't. I don't object to the to the dark, but but if they're coming back to bring an alternative for consideration, could be a possibility. I mean, I I, I think it needs to be clearly contrasting. Yeah. But is it a warmer color? Not quite as as dark. Right. I mean, because that really looks. It says bronze, but it looks kind of black okay so it sounds like there's not total consensus on that so basically the window an option and color provide options yeah in these three postcards um here the window trim color matches the parapet yeah, i mean it's all over the place. color it's I mean, sort it's, of gray the gray and the there's, there's just as many that have it as being dark so well these three are gray this that's dark dark uh, how about the front door? You brought that up, Susan. Yeah, period appropriate. I mean, if there are pictures that show what it was, I mean, it seems like there should be more photographs. This was the 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 big Shazam in town for how many years? There should be more historic photographs somewhere that would show it. Of course, the weather vane on top of the cupola. Yeah. Back on that east elevation, the um, bas relief columns, which they show on this elevation, but to revise and refine the cap. Yeah. Was and we didn't discuss that either. I thought in our previous meeting also wasn't there wasn't there some photos or, or something that, that at one point showed it, those having some additional detail to them? Fluting. The, they're I, fluting? I, I swear they were, they were fluted at one time, but Did I could you, be wrong. Oh, I can't, I can't remember. Yeah. 
<clears throat> you can't really see it. They can research that. So officially incorporating the cap into the pilasters and then maybe additionally doing some research into whether or not, I don't know, if there's something underneath that that that, 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 that appeared in some historic references that they showed those as being having some additional detail to them, like fluting. About the um, window material, the we've discussed the wood windows for the arched windows. Then there's the front door, which is a separate piece altogether. And then there's the retail. Mm -hmm. um, what's so it what are we exactly asking for there? Are we asking for the, them to be completely replaced with new yes. Yes. doors and yes. windows yes. And, and them to be and to be wood? Ideally, yes. but if they want to come back with options, that's fine. But I think that the the I think in my mind we're making a trade-off between the room windows and and to really invest the richness and detail in the retail front right. storefronts and yeah, so and should, they should be really. Can I can I statement. ask a question? If if the storefronts were not originally wood, is it the intent that the commission wants wood to be installed? I would prefer it to go to the original material. Whichever that would whichever be. whatever it is. I would imagine that the, the original material was probably wood. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, there there are pictures of the um, on the courtyard side of the building where they now have those sliding glass doors that they were f wood French doors. Yeah, they were completely I, open doors. Primarily the storefronts, uh, it's more questionable if they were originally wood, I believe. But Well, if, if all the other windows, if everything else was wood originally, I, I would be surprised that they jumped ahead to metal in, in the original. Right. Yeah. So that's sort of the extent of what I've written down, if you have anything I'm trying to think of what else there might have been. Um... um Let's see. I made a... And you had on your list the uh, the opening of the cafe windows. Uh, not specifically, but I know that it was something that was. If you have the official list, okay. well, can we add? Should we, should we have, explore the possibility of having operable windows? Yes. Okay. Exploring the possibility of having operable windows for the cafe windows. I think it'd be nice because other other restaurants in town are doing mm -hmm. doing that. We're very Southern California. I mean, yeah. we have the best climate in the world. We should have some dad. Yes, if I can ask for a point of clarification with respect to the uh, the awnings, not the one at the front entry adjacent to Coast Highway. How, however, the the balance of the awnings. What was the solid color that was suggested? The I, imagery provides for two colors. I think it was the red, right? The rust color. I think it was. I think it was the rest, kind of the. I I defer to a recommendation by the architects. Yeah. Okay. Either one is good. Right. Um, the solid color and you know options. Prefer no GFRC on the ground level. Trying to think of anything else. What, what was there anything specific on the cupola that in terms of detailing that was yeah. um there's a spire there's they show the tile a tile roof um the finials the corner finials are different than what is shown in this rendering they're a different shape which you can see on the historic photographs and then the trim of the the plinth the base support for the for the cupola has molding and then has these little dripping frosting kind of details, two on each side. And it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really well detailed. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, you know, be, you know, as you stated earlier, you know, the building, you know, by itself, if you removed all the, the, it's a box, you know, it's a square box. So the, the more, of these little details where again we're not trying to do an absolute restoration but a renovation of something that you know these details do matter to trying to as i misstated in my sort of car metaphor you know to visually make it look like it was from the 30s but be functional for the times we're living in mm -hmm. okay and i i think 
I think that does staff feel as though you got those requests? Uh, yes, staff. Staff has noted the uh, the comments that have been provided, um, and, and just as a point before you you make a motion on the item, uh, the ne the next meeting of March twentieth is what we call a full agenda at this point. The meeting thereafter is April third. Uh, which has a light agenda at this time. And then we have April 17th, which also has a light agenda. However, given the, the quantity of the comments and the recommendations that you've all provided up to this point, um, it would behoove us to hear from the architect and their team. Right. I'll show when, up. when the time is appropriate yeah. to find out what they need in terms of time frame to come back. Well, I think it is the appropriate time. I'll reopen the public hearing and um, ask uh, one of you to to step forward and just a couple, you know, general question. One, are you are you clear on you know what our our comments and requests are at this point? Um, respectfully, I appreciate all of your comments and consideration. Everybody spent a lot of time on this. Um, we asked for approval with conditions. And we would not like to come back except to discuss or to show you uh, for approval on a specific items. It seems like there's a lot of agreement here on many of these items. And if you want to see more detail on a couple of these, happy to provide that. However, I hear a lot of agreement here. Well, I understood. And However, you know, one, I, we've tried to give you as the applicant team here, uh, flexibility on a number of these items. So we're not, we're not nailing it down one way or the other. We're saying, Hey, you know, come, you know, solid colored awning, come back, you give us some options, you know, that allows you to, to come back rather than us. And basically the bottom line is we're not, there's enough stuff here that we're throwing out and asking for you to consider that I'm nor, I don't think the majority of us are comfortable conditionally approving this tonight. So I think, you know, again, as been stated for us to, you know, to to, could we, to to move this to April is not the end of the world. Could could we take a straw poll on that? I think there is a lot of agreement here. Hang on, sir, uh, please, please. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering because I, I do have sympathy uh, for the applicant in wanting to fundamentally continue to move the project over. And if you, if, even though there's like six or seven or eight things, if they don't constitute, you know, a majority of, you know, the work that is is okay. being approved. I mean, I just want us to make sure that we want to, we have a request not to continue it. I know, but right. if you recall our January 20, uh, 2023 uh, meeting, when we asked the, the applicant at that time to come back with a full comprehensive plan of what the exterior of the hotel was going to look like, and that included everything including a lot of stuff that we've talked about tonight we haven't we haven't seen this project again until tonight and i i feel like personally that um you know because we have so many uh questions about things that we feel are missing or potentially could be added to the project and wouldn't be something that it would be nice to actually visually see an updated at least for me, an updated plan to know exactly what we're what we're, what we're getting here. But I, but I think you could get that with an approval and conditions. Let's take let's take a vote. Who who wants to conditionally approve it tonight? And once again, this is just a straw poll. Does it straw poll? Yeah. Straw poll. I think it seems like you three are, so it's irrelevant. Yeah. So I think it's three to two. But I I, I would let him go ahead. I would I would do the conditional myself. But. Okay. We came here asking for four things, and I think there's agreement on those four things. There, there was a long list of things that we just went through and i believe most of us are all in agreement with everything that was on that checklist it was basically okay solid yeah you know wood windows ground floor yep the thing that's missing are the details for sure the details are missing but we are in agreement that we want to detail the heck out of this thing to make it look exactly like it did in the historic um, 1930s, well, right? Well, April 3rd give you enough time to update your plans and come back for us? Well, certainly. We could get it done before that. Okay. Um, well, let's just continue but, to, to April 3rd. I mean, we're talking about less than a month from now. I don't know. Last time it took a year and a half. I, 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 well, yeah. I guess... Um, so, so if you guys can, the, the 
the public comment has has ceased. So oh. just respond to the direct questions from the chair or 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 the or one of the commission. What date would you like us to continue this to? April third or April seventeenth? Or you have the option of having us just vote it up or down right now. But what date do we have to submit it to planning department for them to review and then make recommendations to you? Because typically Definitely. that's three weeks mm -hmm. minimum. Yeah, so Chair, if you were to continue this item to April 3rd, that would provide the applicant with about a week and a day to turn it around to allow staff to analyze that resubmitted information and then to prepare another staff report. It's a very tight time frame uh, for both teams. Or it could be April 17th and you'd have two more weeks. I mean, It the, doesn't sound like you're giving us an option, so... I'm, I'm giving no, you an option, an option on to, April 3rd, to, to April 7th, tonight, or have us it, has vote on it. Has the decision been made that you are continuing this meeting? And so hang on. No. Once again, so the, the Planning Commission retains the discretion to continue an item should it deem fit. Now, if it's in the opinion of the Planning Commission that that is going to be futile, oftentimes that is when an applicant says, and I'm not saying this is what you're saying, often says, I'm not changing a single thing. I want something right now. Oftentimes, myself and staff would say, hey, this is going to be a, a futile process, so you might as well just, just vote on it right now. I'm not hearing that from the applicant right now. Maybe maybe I am wrong, but I want to be sure that you, know, you guys retain that discretion, not the applicant, not myself, not staff. It's up to the planning commission whether or not you guys feel a continuance and, is in the method. And often, often when the applicant chooses to take a denial, it's because they plan to appeal to the city council and, and make their play there. That is correct. So you have that option. I'm not clear on what the what, what you're asking. Your, well, your options are you could ask for an up or down vote right here tonight with the plans as they currently have been presented, mm -hmm. which most likely would be denied by us. And then and, and you then you'd have a 14 day right of appeal to the city council, and you could go to the city council and uh, right. try a, your and, presentation there. And so, Chair, if I may just add to that, so to give you a bit more more color. So once again, what is what is the staff's recommendation was one of approval. And so and hypothetically, if this goes the other way, staff would need direction from the council on the reasons and findings for denial. And I don't want to speak for Mr. Contreras, but oftentimes what we like to do is bring that back to you all, not to rehear it, not to relitigate, just to ensure that it's accurate. So if we get a motion of denial based off of, you know, A, B, and C, we want to put that resolution together and make sure all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. We then sometimes bring it back on consent for what you guys can say. Yep, this accurately reflects our direction, at which point that is the time the the ability to, to appeal would, would start. Yeah, and to further highlight um, that point, if you were to go down the path of denial, the entitlement before you is, is a design review application. And so you would have to look at the design review findings that have been provided by staff within the staff report and the test resolution, and then signify to staff explicitly what those findings of denial are. Well, I just would make the comment again about referring back to the January 2023 meeting when we asked for a complete comprehensive uh, plan of what the exterior of this hotel is going to look like. We don't have that tonight, as far as I can tell, because there's areas that we've discussed that I'm, I haven't seen a picture of of what what we are actually getting. So that's where I that's where I stand. Yeah. Um, quick question: What level? of surficial detail and ornamentation do you want us to develop on the building? It's very easy for us to just go on an elevation and say, we're going to do this. Um, we, in fact, have found out just recently within the last 24, 36 hours exactly what those consoles look like on the top of the pilasters, what those pilasters look like. There are elements within the original drawings that I don't know that they were ever even built on that building. That anybody ever saw them, but we know what they are now. We can found out. So, and then, do you? How, what do you want us to do with that? I mean, not, we, not looking we for want like construction, fully develop, yeah, fully develop architectural yeah. details 
No. The detail no. sheet. That's what it sounds like. You're that's asking. what it sounds like. No. Well, that's not what you presented to us tonight. That's yeah, true. but that's what you're saying, sounding like you're asking for us no. to provide you. It's just, not at all. So it's just basically elevation showing <laughs> generally what is going to go on there. Updating. Okay. But it's a lot of it's a lot of detail work. I mean, we can agree that we will do wood um, windows on the on the elevations on the storefront, and we we've already said that we're going to add in the transoms that were blanked out by somebody at some point in time. Um, that's that's pretty much. We're going to do that. I mean, I questions about a balcony that may not fit within yeah. code and may not even be on our property lines. Okay. I think it's just out of, it's, you know, yeah. you guys are just debating us now, you know, and so it's, it's uh, we've correct. Right. So it's, it's the, 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 the question for you all. And once again, the level of detail that that was fine. It's my understanding that you, the applicant team understands the concerns. I believe there's eight or nine on your, on your list. And so, you guys may disagree with the merits of them. It is, that is the ball is in your court. If you guys want to explain why X, Y, and Z is not feasible, not legal, or 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 not practical, that is entirely your your prerogative. Right now, what we're asking you is the time frame for that turnaround. Um, I think that that shows a a a pretty you know pretty responsive and and you know uh, dedicated planning commission that wants to kind of make sure that you guys get a fair shake in an appropriate time respecting staff resources so we can you know hear hear it on the merits so what are our options on so so what as what i'm seeing the potentially the, the the majority is that there is a continued date either the third or the 17th okay. based off of what mr Contreras said that the turnaround time would then be a week and one day to allow staff the appropriate amount of time to review it, update the staff report, et cetera, or it can be the yeah. April 17th for which it is three weeks and one but day. The, of but the fundamental two options are you can, you can, you can. Let's not drag this out any longer. The fundamental options are, I mean, we're, we're going to vote to continue it. You can ask us to say, no, don't continue it. We would rather have a, a vote tonight, in which case it would be, a, it'd probably be a denial. Those are your two options, a continuance or a denial. Okay. So then we'll ask you to continue until the the, net, the earliest possible meeting. Which would be the third. But you're gonna you're gonna have to really hustle. And if and if we need to request more time where we we ask that we be given the opportunity to request the later date. I believe there's is there any noticing requirements regarding this continuance? No. Nope. Oh, sorry. If it's continued to a date certain, we do not have to re-notice the project. However, if there is some hesitation on the third, staff would recommend that the item be continued to the 17th tonight. Can I talk with my team and see if their availability? Because it's a lot of work and a lot of time and see if we can get it. Why don't you why don't we decide the third? And then they can they can get back to you if they want to. No, what saying is the if I can just understand the rules. My, so the rule, my, sorry. So so the rule is if if we continue to a date certain, it doesn't have to be noticed because that was on the public. If it's an uncertain date, when the date becomes certain, we have to notice again. That is correct. Okay. So it's best to pick a date and stick with it. Correct, so then, yeah. correct. So just based on what we're hearing from the applicant and having to uh, go back and speak with their team that's putting the changes and the revisions together, staff at this time would recommend a continuance date if that's the will of the commission tonight to the 17th of April. I would that would be my recommendation. Could could we just review the dates again for the April 3rd? When would for the we, April 3rd you would April? have a week and one day to submit the plans into from today. To, from but, today. But when do we get the list of items that need to be addressed? So it starts right. So, so what I mean Staff has 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 jotted those down. We were also hoping that you all were jotting that down. Sure. The, yeah. The, this. We... Yeah. I mean, no. I understand this. The, and, and this meeting is 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 being recorded, so you can always go back and listen to it in in its entirety. I will defer to Mr. Contreras. I assume that the list right here accurately reflects it. That could probably be sent tomorrow, but I'll defer to you on that. Maybe later on in the week. Yes. Thank you. Staff will reconvene uh, to beginning tomorrow. And uh, we will go through with the notes that we've taken. We will also listen to the uh, the recording uh, from tonight's meeting to ensure that we captured our notes accurately. I know the project manager, Martina, was also uh, taking notes as well. 
And so as soon as we can, uh, we will reconcile those notes and send them to the applicant. Can they be sent tomorrow? Uh, we will do our best to start tomorrow. To start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would I would also pause. I mean, the, the applicants were in the room. What they heard exactly what, what staff heard. Right, right. And so, you know, staff's get started. Staff's coalition and, 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 and putting together, if they feel that staff, you know, didn't get it right in terms of your guys' direction, they're free to ignore staff and say that's not what Chair Sadler said. We this is what he wants to. So and 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 due to the numerous of them, I, yeah, you're right. There's probably four or five they can get working on tomorrow. And the video of tonight's meeting is available on the website tomorrow. Can I ask you if we take the third? And it needs to be pushed. It needs public notice. No, but so that what would happen there is was the consternation of the, I believe, planning commission last time. And so that if it was notice for the third and it wasn't ready for whatever reason, it would still appear on the agenda. It would then come before you all, which then you guys would then continue it to another date certain. So think of it like this, that if a member of the public saw the notice tonight and they just showed up here, we need to give them a date certain for which point they could show up again. And then we would need to tell them, come back on the 17th, come back the next month, or kind of hear it. So I think what you're saying, Patrick, is um, Michael's question is, if he goes for the third, he still has flexibility to pull an audible and make it on the 17th. We just have a process. Correct. Now, once again, staff, you know, there's some, there's some planning there. And yeah. we make sure that this is obviously a very... Uh, I don't want to say contentious, but an important issue. So staff is going to. Yeah, the risk is that you fill up the 17th. Or more importantly, that we do not fill up the third. And you are all here saying why, you know, hey, how come things get 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 continued? And and once again, I understand that that's, you know, and so that's just some, something to, to keep in mind. But well, I think that, in this yeah. in this case, we're choosing to yeah. accept that possibility. Perfect. And, and as long as that's the. So we won't yell at you too loud. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's input here. I mean, we we are working hard to get this done, and I, I know you guys are trying to give the best feedback you can. We'll take April 3rd. Okay. Somebody would like to make a motion to that effect, or do you want me to do it? I move uh, that we uh, uh, move the review of Design Review 22-2304, continue that to the April 3rd, 2024 meeting. Second. And with just the caveat and direction that the applicant take the comments from the planning commission and coordinate and work with staff in the event that they are unclear on 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 what the planning commission is looking for, with the goal of so, creating a comprehensive presentation of the building, incorporating the all of the changes discussed. Perfect, Vice Chair. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Goldman. Yes. Commissioner Whiten? Yes. Commissioner Dubin? Yes. Chair Pro Tim Kallenberg? Yes. And Chair Sadler? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for your patience. So I thought it was Give everybody um, a moment to uh, to clear out uh, before we move on to our next item. No, I Thanks, Martina.
Okay, we are moving on to item 5.2, which is a zoning ordinance amendment and a local coastal program amendment. And the applicant is the city of Laguna Beach, and the staff report will be presented by Anthony Vieira, our principal planner. Good evening, chair and members of the planning commission. I'll try to keep my presentation somewhat brief um, given the hour, um, but if I don't articulate something um, correctly, or would, if you'd like me to go into further detail, happy to do so during the um, questions to staff part of the public hearing. Item 5.2 is an amendment to the city's zoning ordinance and local coastal program related to the regulation of accessory dwelling units or ADUs. The primary purpose of the amendments is to clarify the city's authority to consider public view impacts when an attached ADU is proposed and clarify that the review process through which such impacts will be evaluated. In ADUs, there are a few different types. All are defined under state law. And in fact, most of the requirements that the city is able to um, enforce on ADU projects are established through that state ADU law. With ADUs, there are a few different maximum allowable heights to be mindful of, and these are also from that state ADU law. An 18-foot max allowable height is for the detached ADU on a multi-story, multifamily property. Um, all other types of detached ADUs are subject to a 16-foot max height, and a 25-foot two-story height is allowed for an attached ADU, that ADU would need to be attached to a single family dwelling. Unless the um, height imposed on the primary dwelling is more restrictive and lower, in which case the height requirement for the underlying zoning district would prevail. Local ADU regulations must allow for ministerial approval and cannot be more restrictive than state law. There are a couple of exceptions. ADUs that deviate from the objective standards set by state law do not need to be approved ministerially. Also, we can be more restrictive when an ADU would conflict with Coastal Act requirements, which the city implements through our local coastal program. The California Coastal Act governs land use planning throughout the state's coastal zone. And again, we implement that locally through our LCP. The um, Coastal Act and the LCP protects natural and scenic resources, as well as public access to those resources. To achieve those ob objectives, um, the city generally requires CDPs or coastal development permits for most types of development in the city. And as part of the, um, the CDP review process, the city evaluates specific criteria, including criteria which directs the decision makers to take into consideration adverse impacts to coastal scenic resources. And that takes us to the proposed ADU regulations before you this evening as attachment one. Um, to summarize those regulations, um, the director will refer the coastal development permit application for a proposed attached ADU to either the planning commission or design review board when he or she concludes that the project may impact public views to and along the ocean or to coastal um, scenic areas. There would be a 14-day staking period prior to the public hearing. The decision-making authority may then impose a lower height as necessary to protect public views. And finally, this ordinance would also clarify terminology used in the city's CDP regulations to clarify that a CDP is required for both attached and detached ADUs. And so that covers the city council directed work plan 
which responds to issues we have encountered with processing attached ADU applications over the last year. And it was in January of 2023 when this um, the state law was revised to allow attached ADUs to be built up to a two-story max 25-foot height in most cases. Um, yesterday, staff published a supplemental report, which I will cover next. The, if the Planning Commission is prepared to make a recommendation to the City Council this evening, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission also recommend the strike-through deletion shown on the screen. This is a reference to a JADU or Junior Accessory Dwelling Unit within a multifamily structure. And this particular statement is inconsistent with state law in that state law does not allow for JADUs um, to be created within a multifamily structure. Next, we have a set of recommendations that are for the Planning Commission's policy discussion only. These also fall outside of the City Council directed work plan to address view issues with respect to attached ADUs. And so they will not be made part of the, the ordinance this evening, but any comments that you may have on these items will be forward to the City Council for separate discussion. So with a 25 foot height allowance, attached ADUs have the greatest potential public view impact potential relative to other ADU types. However, a detached ADU that could be built to either 16 or 18 feet could still pose a public view impact. And so a question for the Planning Commission here is, should the ADU regulations clarify that the city has similar authority to protect coastal scenic resources with regard to detached ADUs. And in addition to clarifying that the city has the authority to impose a lower height, should the city's zoning ordinance also clarify that the city can mandate a greater setback requirement? Another change that's part of that supplemental staff report is just expanding on the definition of a primary dwelling unit. Um, this would acknowledge that there may be multiple units within a residential structure, and it also incorporates language from the state HCD handbook, which notes that ADUs are accessory to a primary dwelling unit. State law requires that cities ministerially approve attached and converted ADUs that meet certain specified criteria. These criteria include things like height and setback requirements and restrictions on floor area. The city's ordinance refers to these as guaranteed allowance ADUs. And there is another category of ADUs in state law, which includes attached ADUs which the city has significantly more authority to regulate. For these, the city can impose additional objective standards. The city is currently going beyond state law by treating attached ADUs as a guaranteed allowance. And so for the purpose of better integrating these ADUs into their neighborhood surroundings, the Planning Commission should uh, make a recommendation as to whether attached ADUs should remain a guaranteed allowance. If attached ADUs are removed from the guaranteed allowance section of our zoning ordinance, staff recommends setting a new objective standard addressing privacy. Um, this would require opaque glass at any glazed opening of an attached ADU when that opening meets the criteria set on the screen here if the opening is located on the second floor, located within 10 feet of a property line, shared with a lot developed with one or more residential units, and provided that that opening faces a neighboring property. And this provision, again, is intended to address maintaining visual privacy between the ADU and the neighbor's structure and their yard.
Shown on the screen here is another um, item for policy discussion. Um, staff here is suggesting um, or soliciting comment on replacing the primary dwelling unit with single family dwelling since JADUs can only be created within a single family dwelling. Under the setbacks section of the ADU regulations, staff recommends um, better articulating the setback required for water courses. Um, by articulating the requirements of the city's open space and conservation element, which does distinguish between different types of water courses. And this would be required regardless, but this um, provides more clarification in the ADU ordinance. Under the parking exemptions section, the Planning Commission can comment on clarifying when the requirement for replacement parking applies. This is a provision for um, requiring replacement parking for the primary residential unit. If say it's displaced through a project such as a garage conversion for an ADU, this change would clarify that this provision only applies in the city's coastal zone, which is a majority of the city. And finally, staff is proposing two new definitions for single family and multifamily dwellings. This would be specific for the um, city's ADU regulations and planning commission should consider adding these definitions for the reason that we use different definitions within other contexts of our zoning ordinance. Under state law, multifamily starts um, at two or more units. In most cases, in other parts of our zoning ordinance, multifamily is considered three or more units. As discussed in the staff report, um, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission and City Council find the ordinance exempt from CEQA. And that takes us to the staff recommendation by motion. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution, which is attachment one, recommending City Council adoption of the attached zoning ordinance amendment and local coastal program amendment with a revision to Laguna Beach Municipal Code, section 25.17.040, subsection D3, lowercase a, to delete the second to last sentence regarding junior accessory dwelling units, which is shown on the screen here, and finding this action exempt from CEQA under the Public Resources Code, section 21080.17. That will conclude the staff presentation and we are available for questions. Thank you. Great, thank you, Anthony. Um, and the great presentation and uh, through the presentation, you answered some of my questions because I was really confused when I was reading through this thing multiple times. I was trying to figure out, you know, so a couple things. One, first off, the as was stated in the staff report, basically all of Laguna Beach is in the coastal zone with the exception of some areas out in the canyon by El Toro Road, right? That is correct. And when we're talking about visual coastal resources, that's really any visual resource within the coastal zone. Or is it? So when we're talking about a, a, a view impact, was, is that a view impact? Uh, anybody's view impact? Is it a view impact of the ocean? Or is it a view impact? So if, say you're living up in the Arch Beach Heights neighborhood and um, somebody has a view impact to the canyon uh, uh, in the opposite direction of the ocean, but where you're within the coastal zone, is that considered a coastal view impact? So to, to know the one, the, the, the ordinance kind of a, a, as drafted is not meant to protect, protect private views. That's my question. Correct. It is not meant to protect purely private views. It is meant to protect public coastal resources, public coastal scenic views. Um, you know, typically that's, you know, 
parks, trails, roads, um, other kind of scenic corridors from a canyon or an open space easement. You know, I, I can't list them all, but that but it, there needs to be a public component of it. And to answer your question, no, the the the, the coastal act, um, unless it, unless there's view protections in our LIP, which I don't believe there are for for the you know the mountainous or the or the or, or the hillside, typically the 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 coastal coastal act protects views of the ocean, not views, I guess, with your back to the ocean, but still in the coastal zone, looking the other way. Okay, so okay, that answered a couple questions. So one thing is that this is talking specifically about public views. So this in no way yep. is is going to rectify disputes between neighbors about private views or any of that. Okay. So that's that's one thing. So that's that's sort of unfortunate because <laughs> that's that's probably what the majority of the problems, but no, no. I mean no, no. So basically what 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 this would what would allow that should in the future and let's say that this all gets adopted that a CDP application comes for a ADU. The reviewing body would ensure would look to ensure that okay, this is not, you know, the 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 kind of the quintessential example is hey, you're in a park, you're looking down, there's a house on your left, and you can see the ocean. And now they want to put a big ADU that sticks out more, blocking more of the blue water views. This is what that ordinance th this ordinance is 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 geared toward this. That but, but it but it's, it starts out being kind of framed up of being about height. Right. And and yeah. and but yeah. but it so is it that instead of being 18 or 24 feet, you know, it can only be 12 feet. Or does it does the does that public view criteria actually potentially completely disallow the ADU completely? I think I think what my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is in, in the coastal zone, uh, and when it comes to view equity, it can be considered if uh, by either us or design review board if there's an issue with public view of coastal resources in terms of the 25 uh, foot uh, state height allowance, which would then uh, potentially require us to review and 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 either lower the the height. Or and also uh, 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 require a coastal development permit. Right. And, and so I'll, I'll, I'll go to chair. Yeah, I mean vice chair Kellenberg. And so it, it really is a case by case basis. I, I don't want to say unequivocally that hey, there is no chance you can ever build any ADU that 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 blocks a you know a speck of that blue water view from a public space. But you are correct using my example <laughs> that yes, I would think that the city would have a a valid pushback that. If instead of putting it, what that is, that's on the north side of your property, that you wouldn't touch it. You have plenty of room on the south side. The city would be well within its right to to push back and go, hey, wh wh why not put it over there? And so to answer your question, I mean, I, I don't want to say no, we can unequivocally deny any ADU no matter what. It would really be a case by case basis. And so that's done solely by the city, M meaning if 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 Steve is a resident, oh, no, no. says this is blocking a public view. Yeah, anybody could. Right, yeah, just, I mean, to, anybody. Yeah, could, so anybody what's again? Yeah, this is this is a this would be a required finding, like any of the other required findings for 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 an entitlement mm -hmm. in the city. So, I don't. I won't use names. I'll, I'll use myself. If I wanted to say, if my neighbor, if I was nervous about it, I would be able to appeal to the decision making body and say, "Hey, listen, you guys got this wrong. It says you need to protect, you know, public views, and that can mean, hey, instead of twenty feet, why don't you make it twelve? Because that's you know, instead of you know, that reduces okay. the impact." 91 percent or even better put it on the other side of the property and then that that back and forth and process so if i've got a house on the other side of the street from somebody building an adu this doesn't really give me any powers of protecting views from my house but if i go down on the street in front of my house and it brett blocks the view then yeah. i've got a case potentially yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so the other question so th then the next question i had was you know why was this so focused on these uh, attached adus and was it that, you know, this because they have the the potential highest height threshold of twenty five feet? Did, was it that the city council was focusing on that because they figured that 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 height was going to be potentially prob problematic? Yes, that's a great question, Chair Sadler, and 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 I I agree with 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 what you just stated. Um, attached ADUs because they are allowed at uh, a higher height than other types of ADUs. They have the greatest potential. And 
we have had at least one attached ADU project that has caused some, some issues. They may or may not be public view issues that application still in process, but I know that we have heard from, from neighbors and then that caused the city council to give staff policy direction to um, study the matter and prepare a draft ordinance for, for consideration. Okay. And it was intended to address attached ADUs specifically. But the whole reasoning of this proposed ordinance or whatever it, it is that because of the California Coastal Act, that that these ADU regulations, it's it's been determined that it doesn't supersede the California Coastal Act. And so therefore, here's the reasoning that we can have some discretion over the approval of ADUs because of that California Coastal Act. But that same logic apply, would apply to all ADUs. And that's part of what you were saying, this additional consideration for feedback from us was about, even though it's not specifically before us tonight, this same reasoning could be used for all ADUs at 16 feet or 18 feet or whatever, that you could say that this 16 foot high ADU is affecting my public coastal resource view, and therefore it could be limited in height as well, lower than that. Yes, correct, Chair. And for that reason, staff wanted to mention that for the Planning Commission's discussion. But you just don't know at this point really why the City Council didn't go there and just say, well, why don't we just do this for all ADUs? I believe the primary reason is that with the 25-foot height allowance, that's what really facilitates two-story ADUs. In most instances, I would expect single-story ADUs will be fairly accommodating of, of public views, but of course it will be case by case. Okay. All right. But but I, I want to come back to the question of does this policy stipulate that if a AU do, ADU is blocking a public view and it's only 16 feet in height, that there's no recourse? Or would there could there still be recourse? And, and and let's say there's only one place to put the ADU. I mean, Laguna, most lots, there's only going to be one place because the lots are not that huge, not flat. There's topo. And if there's only one, one place to put an ADU and a 16-foot high ADU is still blocking a public view, can that be denied on that basis? Or does that still have the right to, to proceed? And it just can't be 18 or 25 feet. <laughs> yeah. I can. You, you want to try, or you, you want me to give well, it? A, I think give it a try. So I mean, so the, the the language simply just says a lower height requirement may be imposed. Now, so it doesn't say, you know, stopping at sixteen feet. I, I know that the building code okay. requires a, a a minimum, so you couldn't say. Well, that answers the question. Yeah. So so it doesn't preclude the ADU. It just pre. It just it, it might be a twelve foot building height, but right. the, the ADU would still be able to proceed, even though right. even if it blocks a public view. Mm -hmm. But are you asking the question if the proposed ADU is 16 feet high, if it blocks a public view, it's not covered by this ordinance? It, if it's detached, it's not. It's not. Yeah. If it's this, detached, it's this is, not. This is purely, as what's currently proposed, is purely for attached. And what is the height limit on detached right now? It would be either 16 or 18 feet, 18, 18 yeah. feet if, if it's detached from a multi-story, multi-family dwelling. And that is not covered by this ordinance. This is really for attached 28 foot only. And, and, yeah, no, it's not covered because it's, it, it's, it, it's not applicable because you already have a 16 foot building. And if you, you're not, if, and if you're not denying the building, then there's no reason to have it cover it. Well, yeah. If if that sixteen foot ADU is blocking a public view, no. But we're just we just said that that's tough at that point. Oh, you're, is you're it? not you're not going to deny an ADU. It's tough. And as of right ADU because it's blocking a public view. If it's a detached unit, sixteen stories or sixteen feet or less. Two separate issues here, right? They're, what yeah, they're asking us right now is only about attached ADUs yes. and whether or not that they apply this new logic got it to those attached ones so that under certain circumstances 
the maximum height could be lessened from 25 feet to something lower yeah. to accommodate public views. Secondly, they're asking us, what do you think about using this the same logic on all ADUs? Yeah, but that, it, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is it does relate to that question because if, if why apply it to detached ADUs if it can have no effect? No, it can have an effect. Why it's just no, effect? it's no, how, well, because it, it's not part of the ordinance. It's not part of what we're looking at tonight. What what they're asking for, in addition to this, we would be talking about just attached ADUs, right, at this point. In the future, do we want to suggest to the city council that they apply the same logic to all ADUs, including 16-foot high ones and 18-foot high ones, which then they, may, they could consider sent, change in a future ordinance to apply it to all ADUs, well, what was you, uh, in, in which case, I'm, in I'm, which I'm case, still, then I'm still missing how it would have any effect. It would have an effect if what they, would, if what they, would the effect be? The effect would be if they went ahead and and applied this to all ADUs in the future. Then in the future, the same logic could be applied to all ADUs. Yeah, but so if, somebody, an applicant, comes in and they have a detached ADU at sixteen feet. At sixteen feet, okay. you could apply the same logic and say, no, that's got to be only fourteen feet. Well, that was the question. I mean, if it is is the six can the sixteen feet? I mean, what is the 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 leeway of of lowering a sixteen foot? And, and is your, there is, is no leeway now, but in the future there can be if they decide to apply the same logic to all ADUs. But that's not what is being asked of us tonight. Tonight they're well, I just. I thought it was being asked, but and, well, to, to 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 fair question, uh, Vice Chair Kellenberg. So, um, <laughs> but this is the most polite person in the, the the 16 foot proposed detached adu could be conditioned to a lower height it would of course need to meet building code requirements um another suggestion as part of the supplemental was to also explicitly state the authority to require greater setbacks that may be done in lieu of lowering height if say for example you couldn't lower the height sufficiently to to mitigate for that public view impact. So I have a uh, maybe a related question. Um, so in a in a non coastal zone, you know, which we don't have a lot of, but there is some. Uh, if there's an existing multi story uh, home with an attached uh, ADU that matches the roof line of the existing home but compromises the view equity of a neighbor, what happens then? It's not, doesn't address private property. If the no, but ADU... somewhere, I, somewhere I read, read something about mat, matching roof lines uh, up for an attached ADU, but if, if, the, if it, if it compromises somebody's uh, view equity, um, is that a completely separate? I mean, I, it's just a question, I guess, related to ADUs. But uh, yes, Commissioner Dubin, if the project is outside of the city's coastal zone, which would be the communities off of El Toro Road, those ADU projects would not be subject to a coastal development permit, and therefore there would be no consideration of public views. Right. Uh, moreover, because these ADUs are not subject to discretion, there's no view equity consideration for private view impacts. As part of the city's existing ADU regulations for the non-guaranteed allowance ADUs, we have a few extra requirements, and that includes one that you've uh, referenced, which is matching the roof line and, and style of the primary structure if it's visible from a street or alley. That would still apply outside of the coastal zone. Okay. <laughs> but within the coastal zone, within the coastal zone, there, there's there's no uh, protection of private views relative to ADUs. Period. Co correct. We did carefully review that. We reviewed both the Coastal Act and the city's local coastal program to see if there was any language um, authorizing the city to consider public views through the coastal development permit process to enforce local coastal program provisions or the coastal act. And unfortunately, um, in this instance, the, the scope of the view considerations are limited to, to public views with respect to the CDP. 
unless the ADU is also subject to design review. Now, oftentimes applicants are designing their ADU projects to be exempt from design review. Coastal zone detaches ADU impacts public view materially, theoretically. Is the only alternative to reduce from 16 to 14 or is an alternative to deny completely on that basis? Probably have to be case by case. Um, there's a provision in state ADU law, which has been referenced a couple of times here tonight, that the ADU law does not in any way supersede or alter the effect of the Coastal Act. City would need to make a finding if it were to deny that, that project. So a finding in theory could be made. Perhaps. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Just very quickly, so I don't waste everybody's time. We're, we're only talking about the the underlying changes and nothing else that's in the staff report. I, 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 you know, because I got a couple of questions, but I don't know if I, you know if I'm going down the wrong path here. I'm, you know, I... there probably are two two buckets for the Planning Commission's consideration this evening. One is the draft ordinance before you with the one additional strike through deletion that was on that um, recommendation slide. That is the Planning Commission's formal recommendation to the City Council. Parallel to that, staff has, as part of this exercise in investigating these ADU issues, developed a list of other possible revisions to the City's ADU regulations um, related, but outside of the narrow focus of the current work plan. So for the purposes of this dis discussion this evening, we're simply seeking planning commission's policy recommendations on those. Do you matters. want, do you want to take each of those one at a time and then we can comment on them so we can get through your list? Yes, yeah. we can. You went through them pretty fast in the PowerPoint. <clears throat> but I ask a question about, um, how, we've we've um, permitted about three hundred some ADUs to date. Is that right? That that sounds right. about right. Yes. And um, how many of those are twenty eight foot attached ADUs? Twenty five feet. Twenty five. So with state ADU law allowing twenty five foot tall ADUs um, starting January first, twenty twenty three. We pulled some data starting from that date, and it appears that we've received 30 applications for attached ADUs since January 1st, 2023. Hmm. Um, and that's out of a total of 134 ADU applications submitted in that same period. Hmm. And we essentially, unless they're blocking a public view, have no control except possibly this moving into the other section of the code to allow for the setback with opaque glass on the second floor. Yes, I believe that's fair to say. That's pretty scary. Um, however, um, what do you know about that state, state bill 1055, Anthony, that it, Dave Min is is co-authoring, co-sponsoring with the city of Laguna Beach. Tell us about that. <laughs> yes, I, I'd be happy to share what I know. Um, it was just recently introduced um, by the state legislature um, last month. So to be determined if it's ultimately signed into law during uh, by the governor and when. Um, essentially what it would do is it would allow um, cities to require design review for attached ADUs um, exceeding 16 feet in height if certain requirements are met. And that requirement is if the local agency is meeting its RENA requirements for low and very low income housing units on a prorated basis. So the RENA or regional housing, regional housing needs allocation um, it's a nine-year planning cycle. So if we're, say, at year four, if we've met four years' worth of that total requirement of very low plus low-income housing units, 
then the city would be able to require a discretionary design review process for any ADU that exceeds 16 feet in height. How many of those low and very low units have we built? I'm not aware of any during the current planning cycle, which runs from 2021 through 2029. Well, obviously, ADUs are never going to fall into that category. Yeah. Um, and then do these ADUs have to be permitted? Do they have to just be entitled? Do they have to be in construction to qualify? It's a great question. I did try to briefly look into that just before this, this uh, meeting this evening. Couldn't quite determine what the answer might be. It appears that with our annual progress report submitted to state HCD, we're um, reporting on issued building permits. I think that may be the answer. I didn't see that specified in um, Senate Bill 1055. Um, that could also it, there could also be a unique provision with respect to that Senate bill. And and I will just add, not this is outside of SB 10, 1055. In you know previous housing cycles, you would get credit upon building permit issuance. So for you know that's hey, how many low income or you know very low income units do you have? If you can if you could show HCD, hey, we issued building permits for thirty of them on one two three Main Street. That is what was kind of the the line of demarcation. And then does that have to be revisited on a yearly basis? So if in year five you haven't met the proportional you know, number, then you're out of luck. Yes, correct. So we would track progress on our RENA requirements on a year-to-year -year basis. And if between years four and five, we start falling behind, we would lose that ability to require design review for ADUs exceeding a 16-foot height. Thank you. Could I, could I just get a, a, de, a clarification on a couple of definitions? So it, it's, in, it's, it's actually on page two of the staff report, and it's in relationship to an 18-foot state allowance on height, um, where they allow that if it's within a certain distance to a, a major transit stop or high-quality transit corridor. Could you define those two terms just so we know what they are? Uh, yes, Chair Dubin. Um, I don't happen to have the Not definitions. Oh, excuse Just me. Just a regular commission. commission. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. I don't have the the definitions handy, but I but I can say that we have no qualifying stops in the city. Um, of either of those two things. That is correct. Either a oh, high quality transit store corridor or a major transit stop. Okay. Thank you. Um. Because we're just recommending uh, this to the city council, is this considered a, do I open a public hearing or do I just say open it for public comment? I would say open it for public comment. Okay. Um, I will open the meeting for public comment. If everybody would like to come up and speak on this particular item, you'll have three minutes. If you could give us your name and then after you're done speaking, if you could uh, print your name on the list behind you. Good evening. Uh, thank you, staff and uh, I am so tired right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been thinking about this all in the planning commission. I really appreciate all your work that you have done on this. It's been a big task. And I've been in the middle of this since August of last year when a neighbor, which is the second story, I think. Did you get um, your name? My name is Stacy Simone D. Okay. And we have a neighbor that lives on the street right in front of us that is proposing a second story ADU. And we found out that we didn't have any any recourse. We didn't even, the only way we found out about it was through um, a neighbor next door was selling his house. And his realtor went to the city to pull permits and found out that there was this application at the city for a second story ADU that essentially um, eliminated his view from the first level. And so he had to pull his house off the market. He couldn't sell it. He was in full escrow, ready to close. And he had, and it didn't require any staking, any neighborhood notification. My husband and I have gone through design review, the design review process. We understand it, res respect it. And that's what makes our city so special. And, and that's why we have the landscaping that we do, the scenic landscapes. And we're not like a lot of other cities in our county. 
So I think that my, my comments that I would like to make here tonight is that I would like every recourse that we have available in our local coastal plan to be utilized and thoroughly, if we haven't thoroughly investigated it, what can we do? Because almost our entire city is in, in the local coastal plan. So we have resources. I've looked at Malibu, what Malibu is doing, and they're making everything go through design review unless it's in within the four corners of their house. That was the latest. I haven't seen the last meeting, but I, I will get more information on that. And then the other item that I haven't seen brought up on anything is that our fire department has designated a good portion of, of the city into what we call the, there's an acronym, VHFH. Very F high fire severity. Very <laughs> high fire hazard severity zone. Our little two streets are the only streets that aren't in that zone we're right by Emerald Bay, everything behind it. And now we're gonna start stacking. It's it's gonna be, it's it's a fight for the Golden Coast. And we're gonna start stacking all these second story ADUs and we're gonna lose our coastline and we're gonna increase our fire risk. And I think that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, if you just print your name, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm her husband. My name is Mike Simondi. Uh, I live at 1655 Hillcrest Drive, Laguna Beach. Um, I have, I, you know, we're we're both, you know, we're affected by this house that's, that's proposed for a 25 foot ADU. I have read your proposed ordinance, and nowhere when you when you go through the recitals to this ordinance that was written, nowhere does it refer it refer to any citation that plugs you into private views. This ordinance reviews all the recitals, all the whereases, talks about the California Coastal Act. It talks about protection of views, not private views, not public views, just views. And I know the staff said they looked at this completely, but they're about protecting private views, but they didn't refer me to any legal citation to the resource code or anything that says that the Coastal Act only applies to public views. So when I read this ordinance that you that you're asked to approve, if you if, you, if a stranger comes in and reads it, the only time you get into private views is on is at the end at five pages five, six, eight, and nine. My request is that the word private be deleted from the proposed amendment to the ordinance. So that so it talks about views because there is no support, no legal support to narrow the the, the uh, inquiry down to public views only. I have written my comment. I mean, I only got three minutes. I'm down to less than a minute. I've written my comments here in a letter to the Planning Commission, which I'd like to put in the record, which basically explains all of this. I don't know how you do that. I just brought it with me. Give it to her. Give it to her. <laughs> so, but but that's my that's my comment. <laughs> when you look at when you read this thing, there's no citation that takes you to the Coastal Act protecting only public views. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Noted. Oh, I got 30 seconds. Oh. All right. Uh, next speaker. Thank you, Planning Commission. My name is Daniel Haney. I have been a resident of Laguna Beach for 44 years, and I really appreciate all that you guys have done for the city of Laguna. The reason why we have such a beautiful city is because of what you guys do. Uh, I thought you could use a little encouragement after this long night, and I'm not going to go into all the things I had planned, but just want to kind of kind of put um, an emphasis on just how critical this particular issue is. Uh, I've photographed the Hotel Laguna for 30 years, so this is a very dear uh, building to my heart. I think it's, along with the Lifeguard Tower, no more iconic building. Um, but I think the city itself is iconic. The way looking at the seal, how the homes just gracefully and gently come down into the coast, that is the view of Laguna that I grew up with, that you guys allowed me to grow up with. 
um, you preserve that view by allowing these 25 foot pop-ups. I mean, the cupola of the Hotel Laguna is gorgeous in that setting, but is it gonna be gorgeous when every home starts building these little 800 foot pop-ups and you have top hats throughout the city? It's gonna completely change the landscape. So I just wanted to encourage you of just, I know it's difficult. I know we've, there's things we have to work through, but anything we can do to try to give us some ability to um, at least notify neighbors of these 25 foot pop-ups that are gonna affect public and private views. But the city itself is a view of the other houses as you look over the coast. And that's gonna dramatically change if we can't figure this out. So I really just wanna encourage you and appreciate that you're doing this, that you're trying to work through this. And, uh, and thank you for uh, helping to maintain this city that I love so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it looks like that was it for public comment. So, um, you and go to get Anthony to respond. Yeah, Anthony, would you like to respond to any of those comments? I'm, I'm, I'm asking for a specific response to the, the challenge, to the notion that this ordinance should only relate to public views. And did you want me to go ahead and take that? Do you mind? Well, I don't care who. Yeah. And <laughs> And so I didn't, I didn't step on your feet there, did you, did I, Anthony? So um, the, the, you know, the, the, the red, uh, resident is right. It's not explicitly stated in the Coastal Act itself. It is a function of, of case law um, and for everyone's edification. Any change we make to our LCP has to eventually go to the Coastal Commission, which will review the amendment. Um, I can, you know, read from the case. I can I, I'll provide a citation to the gentleman in the audience, in the audience. But basically, in, in referring to that section, which is 30251 of the Coastal Act, the Coastal Commission has adopted the following statement. The primary concern under this section of the Act, which once again is the section talks about protection of views, is the protection of ocean and coastal views from public areas, such as highways, roads, beaches, parks, coastal trails, and access ways, vista, vista points, coastal streams and waters used for recreational purposes, and other public preserves rather than coastal views from private residences where no public vistas are involved. Now, the, the talk about public vistas dealt with the facts of, of, of that case. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of been the understanding um, in basically all the coastal jurisdictions that I that I work with is that that protection of, of, of views, um, how people, people, how other cities get around it is, of course, the adoption of a view ordinance, which is a whole other topic that is not before you tonight. But that is typically um, how it's how it's done, and 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 for the edification of them uh, of the residents, um, I'm lucky enough to serve as the assistant for, for the city of Malibu as well. So I was intimately involved in in that one, and there they do have a private view uh, ordinance, and so that's kind of how they've addressed that 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 private view ordinance would would also apply to any ADU. Um, but once again, that does have a that only kicks in above a certain height. So as long as you stay below that height. You can you can build the ADU, which don't quote me on this, but is 18 feet. So is that something we could do? Create a, I mean, so once again, that, that is not before you tonight. No, but I'm just yes. asking you. But I sure, mean, yes. I mean, if Malibu did it and they didn't, they're not it's sitting in jail. I mean, no, I correct. Believe. But so I, I I will say that they're not sitting in jail. The that view ordinance predated the mm -hmm. issue with ADUs. I was going to say because yeah. you know with state law and state law evolving seemingly every six months or something, you know, it, it felt like a year ago, we had some, a little bit of discretion over, you know, if somebody puts an ADU on top of a garage and it blocks their neighbor's view, then we had some discretion to modify that or, or something, at least I've felt that way. But do we have any uh, local uh, discretionary review of you know, like the situation the the folks here are are referring to in terms of a uh, an ADU going on top of a, a existing residence that's potentially you know uh, diminishing or completely eliminating uh, you know a, a private view of you know that they've enjoyed prior to that being built. Unfortunately, not based on our assessment of what the city is able to regulate with these projects. So we, it's just, it's state law. There's no, there's no uh, local municipal way around that. So the reason Malibu did was, it is able to do that to some limited degree was because that was in effect before 
the ADU law was correct. So, so I can I can speak to that. And once again, that that the the Malibu private view ordinance was adopted well before the ADU laws. That was just the way that they maintained their 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 right to a private view in their city. But we have a um, view, and, we, have and view we, we have we have a view view equity ordinance that's been around for a long time that allows us to restrict development based on uh, view equity from private property. Why wouldn't that, if Malibu had theirs before the ADU laws, we had that before the ADU laws, why can't we right. go so, back to that and sure, utilize and, that? And so once again, it would likely have to be on a on a, on a case by case basis. The one in Malibu was so, so specific that a private residence would come to the private resident would come to the city, city would come out and take pictures from, you know, your, you know, back balcony. They would then see where everything is, see where the hedges are, see where the, the 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 property is. And as I said before, even in that instance, you're still allowed to go up to 18 feet. So your neighbor can put their ADU, provided it, you know it 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 complies with other parts of the code, up to 18 feet. Um, and so yeah, I, I'll I'll have to defer to Anthony on kind of the the mechanics of our. Of so our so that only yeah. that only the only impact was reducing something from 25 to 18 exactly. feet. Exactly. Right. So went our went went our our view equity uh, ordinance apply to a, like a situation like that where you know they're putting an attached ADU you know up to twenty five feet and and it's blocking somebody's view can can we at least say you got to put it down to eighteen feet or whatever? We did scrutinize that um, the issue with. The view equity provision is that it's a design review criteria, and ADUs generally are exempt from the design review process. Yeah, new restoration doesn't have wow. anything to do with buildings. New restoration doesn't apply. Right? Correct. New yeah, so restoration does not apply. Well, that seems like uh, mm -hmm. a big can of worms that we're. That's it's why we need to just, build all this affordable housing. Sledgehammer. That's the only the only tool in our toolbox, right? There's, there's no there's no pushback on that. <laughs> I'm just I know don't laugh at me. I mean, I mean it's you know that's gonna it could potentially spin completely out of control in this in this community, anyways. Well, uh, Anthony's number weren't your numbers that. 30% of the applications were 28 foot. It would be a little less than that. Um, 30 attached ADU applications submitted out of a total of 134. Oh. 25%. Yeah. 25. Still a lot. Okay. It's high. Okay. Um, anybody in particular want to start with comments? I mean, I'll, I'll go. Um, you know, basically, this is, you know, tr trying to give the city some additional discretionary authority over a, a state mandate that has been very heavy handed in terms of the way it allows local jurisdictions to, to deal with ADUs. Um, so in terms of what's being proposed here tonight, I, I'm certainly in favor of that. Uh, Anthony, what do you, could you put up the other issues that you want us to discuss? Uh, my, my feelings as you know, when I was originally reading through this is like, why is this only applying to attached ADUs? It was explained, you know, that those are the probably most impactful with having the highest allowed possible height. But I think that it makes sense for this to be broadened to include detached ADUs. Um, and and those that are you know allowed up to currently up to 16 to 18 feet um should also have this potential uh restriction um and i also agree um I, you know i agree with anything that gives the city more discretionary flexibility um and so that that uh should the adu regulations note that cdb can be con conditioned to require greater setbacks and to address public view impacts i'd say yes mm -hmm. Yes to that as well. So um, I don't know if there was anything. I agreed with the strikeouts that you talked about. Oh, so we should talk about this one. Can we talk about these one at a time and get a consensus? Well, 
So well, does anybody right, disagree right, with yeah, what? So I, I think the, the way to do it, Anthony, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that one, we have the the resolution and the in the ordinance. That should be its own bucket. And then basically, yeah, just go one by one through the through through, through the those policy choices. Well, you took a position I, and I, does anybody disagree with with uh... no. Yeah. So so I think we're on board. So let's move on to the right. next one. What what else? There was nothing else. Uh, what? I thought he had a he had a whole bunch the of strike it. through. Uh, yeah. Well, whatever staff suggested in terms of the cleaning up of the you know the definitions of single family dwelling and multifamily dwelling. Um, this 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 change. I'm I'm okay with that as well. I think. And was that it? There's more. Uh, State Eagles Administrative. And so it, it's listed on the supplemental. Um, the next one, and Anthony, you know, it, it's the guaranteed allowance. Uh, talking about for you know the attached ADU. So that's I believe that's bottom of page two on that supplemental. Oh. I'm not Anthony. Can you? I don't. Okay. So attached ADUs are currently part of the guaranteed allowance provisions. That is correct, Chair. And what that means is that the city cannot impose additional objective standards if we treat them as attached ADUs. And so the suggestion here is to remove attached ADUs from the guaranteed allowance section of the zoning ordinance, which is perfectly appropriate under state law. And then also for the Planning Commission's consideration, staff put together the bones of a, a standard, a new objective standard to address potential privacy issues with second floor windows. I agree with what's suggested there as well. Um, if the two-story 25-foot ADU attached exceeds the, the square footage of the guaranteed allowance, there's a square footage attached to that guaranteed allowance, does that then place it under DRB? Yes, great question. That would become a design review application and subject to discretion. Similar, um, if the applicant didn't want to accept opaque glass to deviate from that objective standard, they would also go through design review for that mm -hmm. if this became part of the city's zoning regulations. What is the maximum guaranteed allowance for that two-story, 25-foot? It would be 1,000 square feet if it's a two, uh, excuse me, a two bedroom ADU. Okay. So is that, is that it that we're weighing in on? Okay. Uh, can, I, I'm sorry. Could I, could I ask staff one question? Sure. I, I apologize. I meant to do this earlier. Uh, Anthony on page three of the staff report, um, uh, four, uh, a, a height of 25 feet or the height limitation in the local zoning ordinance that applies to a primary dwelling, whichever is lower for an ADU that is attached to the primary dwelling, um, the section underneath that, uh, notably the, the mandatory allowance for a height of 25 feet discussed above for an attached ADU does not require a city to allow an ADU that exceeds two stories. Can you kind of clarify that? Sure, we can break it down into parts. What the state ADU law says is that for an attached ADU, that, that being an, an ADU that's attached to a single family dwelling, it would be permitted up to a 25 foot maximum height. Unless the height restriction imposed by the local agency on the single family is lower and more restrictive, in which case the height requirement for the underlying zoning district would also apply to that attached ADU. And then finally, what state ADU law says is that the um, attached ADU cannot exceed two stories, but it would still need to, to conform to those height restrictions. And that's for attached ADUs, right? Yes, correct. So how is, <laughs> if somebody's putting that on top of a, whether it's single story or maybe it's a two story, you know, it just seems like we're, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not understanding it that great, but it feels like we have a little bit of ability to restrict, you know, something that 
you know, obviously they can't exceed the, the height of the existing single family residence. Um, but if it, so if it's, if that residence is 20 feet, then the AD, you can't be greater than 20 feet, right? That saying? No, no. But I, I think it's saying whatever's allowed in that zone. So you could have a house that's 20 feet, but if the, the local zoning code allowed a 25 foot house, height, maximum height, you could go to 25 feet, right? You don't have to. That is correct, Chair. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, just lastly, a comment to the members of the public who's you know, very sympathetic to, to what you're going through. You know, I was on the design review board before being on the planning commission. And when this stuff was first starting to be uh, mandated by the state, you know, we were shocked. It just seemed so, uh, incredible that, you know, that here on these properties that we were spending so much time on the discretionary re review and approval of a house and, and spending hours talking about, can you shift the house over here to protect this neighbor's view? And, and they, all that would be done. And then somebody could come in and put in an ADU in that exact area that you were just talking about, not allowing the main house to go in because of trying to protect somebody's view and without any discretionary approval at all. And you know, unfortunately, that's just the way that the, the state has approached this up to this point. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we're just trying I, to get a little bit of. I saw a presentation yesterday. Yeah. I saw a presentation yesterday that demonstrated that you could take a single family lot now and do a lot split. Then do an ADU for each of the lots. And then there's a new new criteria that if you have a existing building that is underutilized, you can also turn that into an ADU. So, so you build a building, you call it a community room. Once it's you have a C of O, you can say it's underutilized and convert that to a fifth house, so it's fifth unit. So you can get five units now on a single family lot. Pretty crazy. Okay. Um, so anyhow, are we all in agreement with all that other stuff? I mean, it seems yeah. Okay, so, so, what, so what are we? And so, and so, Chair, what we would need is a is a formal motion to adopt the resolution um, recommending the City Council adopt the attached ordinance, the zoning ordinance amendment. Can you? Yeah, Anthony, can you bring that up again because it had that whole strike through part portion. Okay, I move that the planning condition adopt a resolution attachment one recommending the city council adoption of the attached ordinance zoning ordinance amendment 23-2136 and local coastal program amendment 23-2137 with a revision to uh, Laguna Beach Municipal Code 25.17.040 subsection D uh, three uh, lowercase a to delete the second to last sentence regarding JADUs and finding said action exempt from CEQA under public resources code section 21080.17. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Goldman? Yes. Commissioner Whiten? Yes. Commissioner Dubin? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Kellenberg? Yes. And Chair Sadler? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, Anthony. <laughs> okay. We were only confused about 65% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> We've been through this ADU stuff enough that we'd have it all figured out by now, but it just, just it's, keeps changing. <laughs> it's a fluid situation, as they say in the military. Uh, great. No, we still got a little bit more to go. Um, is there any other business? No other business. Uh, any commi committee, commissioner, or staff reports? Uh, staff has no comments. Uh, I provided a biweekly uh, update to the commission, I believe, yesterday afternoon. So you have that in your inbox. Thank so, you. Uh, okay. Would somebody like to make I a just, motion to adjourn quick, to our quick, next regular quick question, please, if you want mind. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's late. Um, the antenna situation that's been put on the radio station building uh is there any reason we're not we're not reviewing uh, that and also any other small cell installations, either new or upgraded installations? Because that's a that was a pretty 
unsightly thing that happened at that building. You know, I, I don't have an update on that case. Um, I can look into it tomorrow and provide an update to the commission. That'd be great. Thank I think you. it was the way it was explained to us was there was an existing facility on that building. Right. And then once there's an existing facility on the building, they are exempt from any other discretionary review. They can and they may, it and do they may add to it as re required, as long as they meet the FCC regulations or something along those lines. Some limitation percentage-wise. Um, anyway. I thought we, who explained that to us? Was it, was it Anthony? I thought that we all, but we had some discretion over placement and aesthetics. I can't, I don't not, think so. Not once they're approved. If they want to expand the facility, we don't have discretion. I thought they did expand that one, though. We right. didn't have discretionary yeah. approval. But and, they, and so, get yeah, Jared caught, and once again, I, I, I'm not familiar with, with that case either. I know a very tiny bit about it, so I'm not even going to try to opine on it. I will caution that in the event it does come to you, let's let's you know stop right. this, stop the discussion. I'm not saying it will, but I'm just saying that there's no. If they, I believe Mr. Contreras understands the inquiry, he'll he'll okay. investigate. Oh, so, nothing David, are you going to update us at the next meeting about what the policy is? Uh, in fact, the next meeting for for the commission on 320. Uh, we do have a presentation uh, from BBNK. They will be providing a wireless update presentation to the there commission. You there you go. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion for adjourn adjournment to the March 20th? So moved. Second meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Goldman? Yes. Commissioner Whiten? Yes. Commissioner Dubin? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Kellenberg? Yes. And Chair Sadler? Yes. Thank you. We are officially adjourned.